meeting to order for April 29th, 2019. And as required by open meeting law, you are hereby informed that the town will be video and audio taping as well as live broadcasting this public meeting. In addition, anyone in the audience who plans to video or audio tape this meeting must notify the chairman prior to the start of the meeting. Hearing nobody, <coughs> excuse me, I'll also note that we were in executive session earlier this evening pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21-2 to discuss um, our uh, non-union uh, strategies and preparations for negotiation with non-union personnel to conduct collective bargaining sessions which was specifically um, assistant town ama administrator approval of executive uh, session minutes. So just want to say that we voted earlier on both of those items. If you would join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Anyone for uh, week <coughs> week? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, how are you? Oh, Carolyn Carey, Community Center and Cultural Center Director. I just wanted to remind everyone that we are in the midst of Art Week. These schedules are all around town, along with pens that have information on the lighting of the building. Uh, and tomorrow, we don't want to forget that we have the Cape Verdean <laughs> journey. Um, talk at the community center, also at Montemoy High School. If you want to see what's happening over there in the arts, they have some open times that you can go in. The library is also doing some programs, and of course at the cultural center. I just wanted to remind everyone that on May 4th, they will be playing Star Wars on the outside of the cultural center, so should be pretty interesting. Um, in addition to that, the video that we shot for Channel 5 will be showing on May 2nd between 5.15 and 6.15, Channel 5, you don't want to miss it, Harwich celebrated. Um, and then we also will be having the opening of the Seaside Marina, Marina at Sacquatucket, Seaside Marketplace at Sacquatucket Marina. Uh, that's on Friday. So please pick up a schedule and we hope to see you at some of the events. Thanks. Thank you, Carolyn. And just to clarify earlier when I described our executive session, sorry, uh, just uh, make it clearer than I did. We discussed the use of sick bank um, and we went ahead and approved that. And the, uh, otherwise we did the approval of the um, executive session minutes for April 8th, 2019, just to clarify. Good evening, Jamie. Hi. Uh, Jamie Goodwin, Channel 18 Station Manager. My uh, announcements aren't as fun as Carolyn's, but I'll give it a whirl. Um, on Thursday, May 2nd, in this room, we're having a cable license renewal proceeding for the Comcast cable contract, and that is open for the public. If anybody would like to submit their comments, if the selectmen would like to attend, that would be great, and that's at 2 o'clock in this room. Also, um, a few weeks ago, I got a complaint or a constructive piece of criticism that people were having a difficult time hearing in this room. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody at the rear of this room, there is assisted listening devices. Um, you can use a neck loop, you can use two, a double headset, or you can use a single ear. And if anyone needs help with that, I would like to help them. We're also going to have those available at annual town meeting, Monday, Tuesday, and probably Wednesday next week. Thank you, Jamie. Anybody else for, um, <coughs> excuse me, weekly briefing? <coughs> is this weekly briefing or yeah. public comment? This weekly briefing. Okay. Well, you can, it, well, let's see if there's anybody else. I think it, Norm has oh, something. Sorry. Board, I have uh, two things tonight. I've reported in past years that uh, I'm very proud of our uh, uh, public safety slash town of Howard hockey team. They played in Marlboro a couple weeks ago, over 120 teams, and uh, the team comprised of Howard Police, Howard Fire, and the DPW um, came out second, uh, including beating teams from the F National FBI team, Homeland Security, which I take great pleasure in doing. But, we're <laughs> <laughs> but we, we did lose to a police department in the end. But so I'm just saying there's more to we work, you know, not only during bad times, but during good times, these folks come together and if. Uh, I could get Dan Pelletier to add that to his application process for new employees. Uh, and Chris, we'd probably take first place next year. Uh, the second thing I'd well, like to mention. Wait a minute, Norm, did you have to give anyone first aid? 
No, they, they're pretty well self-sufficient. <laughs> um, uh, but again, it, it's you know a small town, and uh, this truly is a high quality, uh, uh, very good hockey. So I'm very proud of that. Before you uh, go on, and applause. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, in, just as I remember, if you come into the uh, lobby of the fire station, you'll see on the wall a, a shirt from Sean Gannon. Uh, they did last year was in uh, memory of him. And uh, three of my firefighters bid for a hockey shirt. It, uh, it was a Bruins with a Gannon on the back. And uh, $2,000, they, they bid and donated that to the lobby. So uh, very good. Uh, second of all, last week, um, and I'm going to apologize to uh, my good friend, uh, uh, Chief Gomet. I'm going to mention this. Uh, so we had a fire in, in, in Pleasant Lake. And <clears throat> it was a, um, a fire where two police cruisers arrived before we did. Uh, three officers, one cruiser had a, a, a field training officer and a, and a new cadet and, a, and another officer. And when they got there, they had a report of someone in the building, and they made the decision, probably breaking protocol, a uh, split uh, decision to go into the house. Uh, and they didn't find anybody, but they did bring out a dog. Uh, but as a result, all three of those police officers were transported to the hospital. One of those police officers was being treated for cyanide poisoning. That's part of the hazard of our job today. Fortunately, they're all released uh, because with technology, we have medicine that will counteract cyanide poisoning, poisoning when we know it's there immediately. So I just want to commend uh, the Howard Police Department and their dedication uh, to the citizens of this town. Thank you. <laughs> Never fails to impress us how hard both our fire and uh, police work, so we appreciate it every day. Thank you. You want to join us now for <laughs> public comment and announcement? Thank you. Yep, Chris Joyce, Voter Information Committee. Uh, we've been busy, as you know. We uh, uh, are going to recommend to uh, those folks watching, especially tonight, that on uh, Channel 18's web page and also Voter Information's web page on the town, town's website, we have uh, programs preparing folks for uh, town meeting. Muni Finance 101, take a look at that. The Financial State of Harwich, it's about a 45-minute panel discussion. And uh, we also have review of the uh, authorized official articles, most of them, uh, also on the website. Um, and then our next program is uh, on May 14th here in the Griffin Room. We have uh, two candidate forums. The first one's at 6.30. League of Women Voters of the Cape Cod area will moderate both forums. The first one's with the three selectmen candidates, Michael McCaskill, Stephen Ford, and Thomas Sherry. Following that, about 7.50ish, um, the second forum uh, uh, for the uh, Monomore Regional School Committee candidates, Linda Sabula and Meredith Henderson. Last year we had a full house, standing room only, and we hope uh, our voters will come out on May 14th, 6.30, and bring questions. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yep. Anybody else? Um, so on May 4th, though, at the South Howitch Meeting House, we're also going to be having the candidates there as well from 10 to 2, all three um, candidates running for Board of Selectmen and the two for School Committee. And that's from 10 to 2 at the South Howitch Meeting House. Anybody else for public comment or announcement? Hi, I'm Bob Nickerson. I live in Howardsport, and um, it's going to take a few minutes. So, if you want a glass of water or something, go ahead and get it. So, what I want to talk about is the issue of music and noise. You've talked about it a number of times over the last months and months because I've watched every <coughs> meeting after the fact, and while we have a policy in place, um, in my point of view, it's not working well. So what I want to do is I want to kind of back up a little bit. I want to go back to 2016 when there was a meeting which I attended and we talked about the rules, we talked about the 150 feet, and the 150 feet is specifically from where it originates. So it's not the edge of the property, just so it's clear. That's right here in the bylaws, all right? So 150 feet's not very far, all right? Um, 
And at that time, that's when we came to an agreement, or there was an agreement of 4 to 10 o'clock. Since that time, we've gone to noon to 10 o'clock, okay? And this is still in place that we have 150 feet. Unfortunately, the 150 feet, in most cases, is not being adhered to. And that's kind of what, some of what I want to discuss. So what prompted all this, all right? What prompted this was the article and the Board of Selectmen meeting in December of 2018. Now let me write, read a couple of things that were <coughs> said at that meeting, all right? First off, um, consider adjustments to the noise bylaw. <coughs> that was kind of a key that got me kind of concerned. Nuse noise from the music from liquor establish establishments in Howardsport and if uh, and filtering into residential neighborhoods is becoming a growing concern. That's a good positive comment, right? It's a concern. And then we want to revisit. Somebody said, well, we want to revisit the bylaws and specifically made a comment about perks and not being able to have the TV on after 10 o'clock. Well, you know, when perks got the license, they know what the rules were. So it kind of irritates me that we're going to try to bend the rules because, potentially, because they aren't following the rules, so we're going to bend them, all right? So that's a potential that might have come out of this, right? Um, so it said our regulations didn't allow to have a Red Sox game playing. No, our regulations said you have to keep the noise at a certain level. All right, um, the, next, the next comment was, uh, you know, this is a destination location. So let me back up one thing. I am not anti-music. I am controlled music. Okay, reasonable music. And I think all my neighbors feel the same way. Right? And I only live 300 feet from Embers, just so you know. All right? Um, so when Perks came in, I mean, they, they got an out, outdoor license, and uh, I hate to say, I'm not sure how that ever happened, but that's another whole story. Um, and they were complaining about, you know, we were, we were shut down at 10 o'clock. They knew that when they got the license. They knew that when they started the business. So I don't understand why, they, why we're uh, addressing that or need to address that. All right, so, um, and then somebody said that people buy a house in commercial district because they like the activity. Yeah, they like the activity, but I'll tell you, they don't like sitting in their backyard listening to music at 9 o'clock at night. All right, so um, we had some other comments. Um, the police chief said that, you know, there's no way everybody can make everybody happy. Well, I agree with that. Um, we also said that there were 54 complaints last year compared to 25 the year before. Um, so that we've increased the number of complaints. Well, I looked at the chief's um, annual report, and it's, he reports that Monthly, we're doing 335 calls, 50 calls out of a whole year. It doesn't seem like a huge number. And the complaints are going up because the problem's going up. So I'm just going to interrupt you for a minute because we're going to have a public hearing, so you're welcome to... to When's that? This evening. Oh, so I didn't know whether I should talk now. That's or fine, I, and I don't mean to cut and We you can short, wait till then. I just yeah, didn't want to so lose that opportunity. If you want to wait until then, that's I'm, fine. Why don't we move? Yeah, go ahead. Well, I think that if the questions are in regards to the, the board did task administration with looking at uh, making revisions to a, a board policy about noise in the Howard Port area, if it's in regards to the general policy, Chief and I have had extensive discussions trying to see if there's any recommended tweaks. Uh, we have not yet come up with something that makes sense to us. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why there hasn't been a recommendation to the board. Mm -hmm. But if it's a general question in regards to the policy, then that probably is fair. If it's specific to perks, then it should be at the hearing. Right. Okay. No, it's not specific to okay, perks. Okay, then go ahead and continue. It's, it just includes perks and all the other venues. So, so if you read, the, read that back in 2018 in December, you'll see all these questions that came up. So what did that spark? That sparked me getting concerned, and I have a lot of neighbors in the area that were concerned. So I wrote 200 plus letters to all my neighbors and I had a response of 40 people that were very strongly um, behind the fact that we needed a better control system and we needed to make sure that we were limited on the amount of music or the loudness of the music. Not one of them said no music, okay? So I just want to make that clear. So 
of those 36 homeowners, okay, um, a number of those people wrote letters to the board and you all received those letters, so you kind of have those comments already at hand in your, and you know what they said. Um, but it was all about the audible noise issue, all right? So, so now I'm gonna go to the, sort of this general comment, I guess, about how I see the decision making going on. We have Cape Side um, came in and wanted a permit. A lot of people came in and wanted to not give, get the permit for alcohol. Um, I don't think it's a big deal personally, okay? But my concern is in, in a, two or three years, they're gonna all of a sudden say, well, we wanna go to d a dinner time, then you're gonna extend the permit, then we're gonna have alcohol till nine or 10 o'clock, and then they're gonna want music outside the back door, and so I'm concerned about that trap. Um, obviously, last week you talked about Tavern and the Inn um, venue. You allowed the inside music. I have no problem with the inside music. The neighbors seem to be okay with that. They fought a long battle. I'm very supportive of them not having lists of music in their backyard over and over again. Um, and then, of course, tonight we have perks as a venue item, uh, as an item too, which I won't talk to right now. All right? So what I want to make, I don't want to uh, drag this on really long, but what I want to give you is this map. show you all the map. The map is Howitch Port. This can happen anywhere in Howitch, sorry. Anywhere in Howitch, right? And what is on there is a radius of 150 feet. And if you look at the 150 feet, that's within the commercial district. The problem is the noise isn't staying at 150 feet. And I'm not so talking about trickling noise. I'm talking about clear noise, all right? So I drew a bunch of radiuses on here. At 600 feet, I have neighbors that can clearly hear the noise, right? That's a problem. So then what did I do? On the second page, I took this general area and I added up from the assessor's database, and guess what? That's 324 homes worth almost a quarter of a billion dollars that pays over $2 million in taxes and they're being influenced by four businesses that's worth $4 million building-wise and pays $37,000 in taxes. So my point is, where's the fairness to the homeowners? We come down, I live here full time, we come down, they come down, enjoy their homes, they're sitting in the backyard, they're hearing all this music at 10 o'clock at night or nine o'clock at night, it's not fair to the police chief to have to go running out and, and checking these things out. I'm fully you know, behind them. I don't think it's fair to them. What we need to do is get a reasonable policy that works. You're not putting any onus on the, ho on the uh, venues. You're not requiring them to have the music down lower. That would be a simple solution, right? Just turn it down. You're not, allowing, you're not telling them that they need sound absorbing, sound absorbing material to try to mitigate some of this. They have caught blanche. They do whatever they want. So I'm just throwing this out there that I think you represent not only the businesses, you represent that 324 people, homeowners, that are paying a lot of money in taxes and have to listen to this all the time. Thank you for your comments. We appreciate that. <coughs> Anybody else for public comments and announcements? Okay. Hearing nobody, I'm going to move on to the uh, consent agenda. And we are holding. Which one are we holding on? Oh, no. Okay, never mind. We're okay. Ed? Yep. And, uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to present the Consent agenda and move adoptions of the following items. Uh, minutes of February 25th, 2019, regular session. Minutes of April 16th, 2019, regular session. The minutes of April 8th, 2019, executive session. We'll hold uh, item B to take up immediately after the consent agenda. 
um, and approve application from the American Lung Association for a license permit to hold the 35th annual Autumn Escape Bike Trek on Saturday, September 28th, 2019 from 10 to 2 p.m. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? So, uh, Madam Chair, the, the reason we're holding the um, uh, item B, it's a vote to approve a new registrar with a three-year term to begin on July 1st, 2019. And in the packet, there's a letter from the Republican Town Committee re making recommendations of three people, um, but there's no indication that we've had a chance for the interview committee to interview them and, and make their recommendation to the board. So I move that we, or I think we, this should be put off until we can have that happen. I'm taking a slightly different take on this, uh, ultimately. There's only one position. Uh, I know the three people here, I mean, I'm not, and they're all capable. The question I had was, the clerk really uh, has to work with the registrars, and uh, generally, we take the clerk's recommendation. I, I don't have a problem with any of the three of these, but she's got an election coming up, and she's going to need a registrar, like, soon. So. I, mean, I, I would move that we accept the list subject to a selection of one individual from the, uh, uh, the town clerk. Second that. Yeah. All right. So moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Abstain. And Ed's abstaining. Okay. Um, public hearings and presentations. Uh, public hearing new application for season common victual wine and malt beverages licensed by Dockside Seafood Shack 715A Route 28, Joseph Griff Griffiths, manager. And would you read that? Yeah. Let me get to it. Town of uh, Harwich notice of public hearing. Notice is hereby given under Chapter 138 of the General Laws as amended that application has been made to this board for a seasonal common victualler wine and malt beverage license by Dockside Seafood Shack LLC, DBA Dockside Seafood Shack, on the following described premises located at 715A Route 28, Harwich Port, Massachusetts. 02646 Joseph W. Griffiths, manager, single story, 540 square foot building, no interior access to the public, window service for ordering and pickup, approximately 80 seats located on the multi level deck and the adjacent lawn, four exits for employees, <coughs> public restroom located in the adjacent Harbor Master building. The Board of Selectmen will hold a hearing upon the application on Monday, April 29th, <coughs> 2019, no earlier than 6.30 p.m. in the Don B. Griffin Room at Town Hall, 732 Main Street, Harwich, at which time all interested parties will be heard, uh, signed the Board of Selectmen acting as the local licensing authority, and printed in the Cape Cod Times, April 18th, and the Cape Cod Chronicle, April 18th. Thank you, Ed. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Good evening. Good evening, board. My name is Matt Kelly. I'm an attorney. I have an office in Harwich. This is Joseph Griffiths, who I know you met uh, a couple weeks ago. I did have the opportunity to review. Um, I was not here for the lease uh, process, but I know there were several questions asked of Mr. Griffin relative to potential uh, liquor licensing at that point. Um, this is uh, an application consistent with the RFP that was originally put out, consistent with the um, lease that was approved it is a beer and wine <coughs> application for seasonal use um, at Dockside Seafood, which is um, the snack shack, uh, I'll affectionately call it, um, down at Sacquatucket Harbor. Um, you have in your packet, I believe, a letter of support from the police chief. Mr. Griffiths was pro properly vetted, uh, seems to be a suitable person to hold their liquor license. As you already know, he does currently hold a liquor license at a restaurant. 
uh, in Rhode Island and Newport. He also has previously held a liquor license without any disciplinary issues in Massachusetts or um, Rhode Island. I know he answered some of your questions last week. I'm happy to answer and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have, but um, it's consistent with the um, approved lease, consistent with the RFP. We'd ask for your approval. Thank you. Is there anything you wanted to add, Chris? Or? We did uh, negotiate. We were uh, concerned about the area. Uh, we did select an area that's within the fence, uh, fenced in to have a, a reasonable element of control. He was amenable to all those changes, so I believe uh, Harbor Master and I are in complete agreement uh, that this is consistent with the RFP. Thank you. Any questions from the board, uh, Michael? Well, the question I have is the the, uh, the map that went out in the original RFP that you responded to was a very specific map, and it was the area in front of the snack shack, the deck, and the area in front of it. The air, the the area in the uh, in the in the response to the RFP um, was much larger. Chris, can you tell us why there's a difference in the uh, the area that we're permitting? I think in general, we when the original uh, RFP went out, uh, we had in there that there would be a future application for a liquor license. And when John and I went through and we wanted to see where are points of control, uh, how could he manage that area, uh, we did redraw the map to be consistent. What actually ultimately went to the board did include the map uh, that showed the area, to the best of my knowledge. If I can continue. Yeah, go ahead. The, um, the map, Chris, the redrawing of the map, that was after the RFP was submitted and the RFP was returned by the one applicant. So the RFP that went out, that the rest of the public could have bid on, showed a much smaller area. And it said nothing about an 80 seat um, snack shack. You, you seem confused, do you want me to show you that? I can show you the map. Yeah, no, I, I just, I, I think in the, um, I, I, I'm not familiar with the RFP in terms of, I thought we had in there, and I'm looking for John Rendon to actually, uh, he was a little bit more familiar with it. We had in there that the applicant would apply for a liquor license through AVCC, and in the negotiations, we're entitled to do negotiations with an applicant, we laid out an area that we believe to be consistent in order to have an effective control of the liquor license. So what would be a general area was more definitively negotiated and defined after the, after the fact of what was originally submitted. I understand what you're saying. How does somebody bid on something when they're given an area and a map to bid on? And then we broaden the scope of the area after the fact. Had we put in the RFP that we were looking at an 80 seat spot at our harbor. I guess th that's question number one. I, I don't, don't want to die on that. The, um, the second thing I have on this is I don't believe this has been through the planning board yet. The, the but I respond to that? Oh, just one more the, the site has been <coughs> approved by the planning board. Nope. We went to planning board when we originally constructed the building and in that planning board approval we specifically asked for a snack shack as part of the drawings. So planning board approved it with a snack shack. Planning board was not aware of who the actual vendor would be because we had that to be determined after. We definitely have approval from planning board to construct what's out there. Uh, Michael? Uh, Chris, I, I just, I have to argue, you know, tonight we have Kirk in front of us for a public hearing for an expansion. Um, but the, uh, the brackets are in the room tonight. They were before us for Ember and the port for an expansion. They, they both had to go through the planning, and that's just two out of many more that I can list. Um, Matt, we just did recently did 10 yen, just had to go through the planning board process. The planning board certainly looked at the site. <coughs> I agree. The planning board hasn't looked at a now 80 seat snack shack. And I don't believe that we're covered legally based on how the RFP was written and the map that was included to now come before, for them to come before us now for a liquor license mm -hmm. for an 80 seat snack shack with a much more defined area. It looks to me almost double the amount of space 
from what the RFP went out to the general public for. John? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, first of all, that's what I used to do for a living, is put out contracts. And contracts are bounded by time, place, area. Uh, you can't know who would have bid if you defined a particular area of seating and all of a sudden you negotiate what that is after the fact. Everyone has to have the same understanding of what they're bidding on because you have the <coughs> capacity to make more money with more seats. Mm -hmm. So number one, that would have been out of order. Number two, I took the time to call upstairs. And the board, you have to have a locus in order to be able to approve a license. Uh, the planning board maintains that it did not have an approval for this specifically, just for the overall general site. The Board of Health had an application in front of it for 50 seats for food. I mean, this is getting to the point where we have a long history in this town of creep. I mean, I wasn't in favor of the lease anyway because mm -hmm. I, I actually felt uh, the, I was not understanding why there wasn't competition for this and that there was a sole bidder. But having said that, now we're, uh, the applicant himself talked about a fenced area and keeping control of people with a number of employees who were uh, designated to do so. Now we're talking about people going on uh, the multi-level deck and the adjacent lawn. I mean, you can only get there by taking a boat to the area or a car to the area. I mean, essentially, we're, the, we're busting out the area, 80 seats. We, we didn't even agree to have a restaurant there that was 60 seats because we thought that was too much. I mean, no one thought of this as being 80 seats. Certainly the Board, the board of Health hasn't uh, opined on this. They have, uh, as far as they know, there's 50 there seats. Never discussed the planning board the used area. the number 75 yeah. seats. This is 80 seats. I mean, we've got to get our story straight here, and I don't even think that this is within the scope of the original contract because the contract was not listed as having this area to be available for seating. So uh, again, no in our history, it's gonna rain next year and all of a sudden somebody's gonna talk about in, uh, putting a canopy over and then enclosing it and don't say it can't happen because there's dozens of places in Harwich where that has happened. Mm -hmm. We have a lousy history of controlling these things and sooner or later we're gonna have a fully enclosed serving area uh, it, that's got 80 seats. Uh, this is ridiculous. This, is, this doesn't even belong in front of us if it doesn't have a uh, pinned down locus. The ABC only gets licenses that have a specified approved locus. Uh, oh, sorry, Larry. My question is, or my concerns related to theirs, but uh, we promised, and one of the issues we had when we were talking about the restaurant and it comes in with this, is public access to the waterfront. And, and people want assurance that there's going to be picnic tables and public access so they can sit and enjoy looking at the waterfront. It may not buy anything from your restaurant. I want to be sure that, and it looks like you may have prevented that by this expansion. And that's been an item that we've promised people over and over again that there was, even with a snack shack, there'd be public access to enjoy the waterfront. So it's kind of related, but it's the same, same situation. Any other board member? I was going to go to John. Calm down. John? Good evening, John Rendon, Harvard Master. Um, I guess I'm a bit frustrated that why didn't these concerns come up when we presented the lease in front of everybody that had the drawing, that had the space, that had the area that we were going to contain? I, I, I think I went before you. I know. Joe was here. I mean, we, we could have squashed it then if we had those concerns. I mean, it's not like we didn't show the area and the attachments to the lease of what we were proposing. Um, I mean, we did go to the planning board. We did talk snack shack. It was approved as a snack shack. There was no uh, discussion. I mean, that was year and a half ago, so I mean, I, I don't remember all the details, but we said we were gonna have outside seating. There was no, at that point, time from the planning board to nail down a specific number, the, the, the general area, but I just, I mean, had we gotten to the point when we went in front of you 
um, with the lease, if we had these concerns, we, we you know, we, we could have made some uh. adjustments. But I, I just, I mean, we were pretty careful and thorough in presenting the plan that we were proposing uh, the layout that we were proposing that all of you had the opportunity to read and comment and vote yay or nay and right. hold on oh, Larry I appreciate you John made comments uh, John maybe it's my fault I did see this but and I guess it was the uh, discussion about control is that's when the fence came up and so I didn't realize that the picture cable out there would be uh, would be, re be restricted to the snack shack and wouldn't be uh, open to the public. Well, there's a large and, section and if of- that's true, and then that's my problem with it is, is restriction allowing people to enjoy some of those picnic tables. You know, I understand the control, but that was, that's a change for me. Th there's a number of tables that were being proposed as part of the seating. They're not exclusive to the, to the snack shack. I mean, they're open general public. Okay. On that note, John, can you give it just an idea of numbers that would be open to the public? I, if I can leave that to Joe okay. to discuss, I think. Right. Another question yeah. from Michael, and then I'll go to you. Michael? John, just to, uh, to follow up. Okay, sir. Sorry. You know, my apologies for not bringing this up last week, and as everybody knows, I was against this from the beginning. I came around. You've done a beautiful job with the harbor. Thank you. Uh, the board voted to allow for a snack shack, and, I, and I've honored that vote from the beginning. We get these packets on Friday afternoons, and they're usually 150 to 250 pages. And the, the single request for the RFP was in there, along with a map and a detailed drawing. Um, it wasn't until this weekend of this packet that I went back and looked at what we had talked about at town meeting when this was approved, and I went back and looked at what the RFP said. My problem with this, John, to start really is the RFP was pretty specific and it was sent out for people to have that RFP packet and to bid on it, and there was a map of location in there. And looking at what was in the RFP, it's, it's increased from that, and unless I'm being told differently, it's increased from that in his drawing, and, and by, I think by your admission, and it's also now mentioned, 80 seats is mentioned, and that's number one. Number two, I don't know how we put the public through the planning process for restaurants and the planning process for anything that they want to do, but we can circumvent that. And I'm looking at it as that we circumvented it, not you, because it wasn't a specific proposal for a restaurant at the time. And I'm asking why, and I, I haven't really got a clear answer. The harbor was done through planning, but the restaurant, our maps changed from the March 25th meeting to the 418 meeting. So the public had no chance of seeing that. So there was no way we went back to planning and said, this is what we're proposing now. Is it safe? Is it doable? Is there enough parking for the restaurant? That, those are my questions. Well, I, I tell you, it would have been nice for you guys to make that request to us early on when we were going through the RFP process and the lease process. And I mean, we've been doing this for I think uh, quite a long time, and, and maybe I should have known that, I don't know, but I, I certainly think we've been very transparent in what we were trying to do with the Snack Shack. And, and also, as far as the growth, again, uh, there's that area that's going to be non-exclusive to the Snack Shack, that we would have put tables up for the public if Mr. Griffiths hadn't put them up. We would have put them up, but he has agreed to put them up and leave them open to the public. So it's not that much of growth because of that fact. But Chris, uh, you know, I, I think you know, it's an interesting discussion. You know, we did present a, a site plan to the planning board. Mm -hmm. We indicated in there that we were going to have a restaurant. I will go back through. I, I understand the, the point about what did we tell planning board, what do we tell board of health in terms of the number of seats to make sure that we correspond. It certainly is our intent to correspond. But when you have a snack shack that is just gonna issue food with the full expectation that it's gonna be consumed somewhere on property that we own, the, the control question comes up solely for the ABCC. 
ADCC says where on the map are you going to have where service, servers are going to have or be, have to control that area. So the area of control is, you can shake your head all you want, John, but the area of control is specifically oh, for ABCC purposes. And to, Don, uh, to John's point, if we had put enough tables out there for the general public to bring their own food and sit there, we would have just put out whatever tables we needed to accommodate the general public. So perhaps it was a little bit of a disconnect, and I'll, I guess I'll own that, that in terms of the alcohol piece, did we know, we did not know the specific numbers with the planning board, but we certainly always disclosed the planning board that it was a takeout operation and that most likely the takeout operation would serve food, as takeout implies, to be consumed somewhere in the close proximity to that area. Thank you, Chris. Don? Okay, first of all, I'm not going to apologize because often people are watching these meetings and saying, it seems awful chaotic. How come you guys don't seem to know what you're doing? And I'm telling you right now, one of the reasons is because you can't expect to have a selectman who just happens to have held a liquor license and who just happened to have been a senior contracting officer getting elected to the board. We rely on staff. And staff has got to get it straight. The scope of a contract is formed by how you put the bid out. You can't possibly expect somebody to know that we could negotiate this thing <coughs> bigger after the fact. They're not, they're not on notice that. Now, as far as you keep mixing apples and oranges in the discussion here, too, I don't care about the serving, I I mean, about the food. I care about the serving of alcohol. The seats for 80 seats, this is wrong in two ways. It's bigger than it started out in the RFP, but if some of this is public, that's wrong, too. It's a pouring establishment. If you had a restaurant and there was a bus stop in front of it, people should not be allowed and cannot be allowed under the law to take a, uh, an open uh, glass of beverage, alcoholic beverage, and go and sit. As a matter of fact, you're supposed to stop them from doing that. So some of these are not on the premises. This is a land use lease. He only gets to use, for the purposes of the pouring license, the section that he leased. He doesn't own the whole harbor. He can't use extra sections of it. That is extra to, to his property. The land use he gets to use is what you leased out to him. He doesn't get to use the rest of that area. If people wandered off with food, nobody would be saying anything. But this is not food. It's a pouring establishment. He has to have a specified seating area, and we have to stick to that. Neither the planning board nor the Board of Health is of the position that they have taken this matter up specifically for pouring. Neither of them. I checked on that today. Can I, uh, Larry. let me ask you a question. I, I have gone back, John, to the uh, RFP uh, diagram, and I don't, I don't see where it lists the number of seats. But it lists a, uh, a restricted area of five picnic tables as part of the uh, pouring area in the control area. And then the one we have now uh, lists that area plus a side area going almost, uh, you know, directly in front of the harbor. And so this is an expansion over the RFP. My question is, is it, is it a viable business if we go back to the RFP? Uh, I'm going to let you respond to that. They have the more particulars, Mr. Griffin. I'm, I'm a little bit confused because <clears throat> the only drawing that was in the RFP was the architect's drawing, which cited the snack shack and the deck areas and the adjacent lawn area. There was no designation in the RFP as to limitations as to uh, where tables could be set or how many uh, was a maximum or limit there, therefore. Um, I'm a little bit dismayed at this point. Um, the RFP included provision that the applicant could apply for beer and wine. It was not my idea. It was in there. Uh, I frankly would not have responded at all. You'd have had no, nobody responding. Uh, if, if that wasn't in there, you wouldn't, I wouldn't be sitting here. Because, and as I told you before, I'm a CPA. I'm a back of the house guy. I know the numbers and I know what it takes to make something work. I thought I was 
making an investment in the community that everybody would be proud of. Uh, to date, I've spent $80,000, and I've got another 20000 to expend. I did that on the good faith of the lease. The lease, my proposal for the RFP said, I'm not interested if I can't have the beer and wine, because I can't make it work. So I have a lease in my hand that says I can apply for the beer and wine. It was approved, Four. not unanimously, one abstention, Mr. Howell. One no. Against. One no. I was, uh, and, I would, and I went through mm -hmm. my background, controls extensively, and we talked about liquor a lot at the lease hearing. Now, I cannot go forward if we don't have this. Mm -hmm. And I feel as though um, if you want to purchase my equipment, my investment, and a reasonable amount of my time in, that I've invested in this, then, you know, that, if that's the course you want to take, you know, I, I have no control over that. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I, I, I still I have my question out here. Oh, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I asked it already. Oh. Yeah. So because uh, we have the architectural drawings, but it does show tables in front, but not the side. So Are you talking about the architect's, the architect's rendering that has five tables on it? Right. That was the RFP. The but RFP. That, that's that's not, in the RFP. But that's not what was in the, the bid limitation. That's just him. I mean, there's space for other tables there, too. He didn't put anything on the lower deck. You're, you're referring to this, right? There was no, well, there was nothing. The question we're having, though, is, is the difference between RFP and what, what came well, back well, and the controls being ex I, Gary's been expanded. But I mean, I'm, really, I'm for the liquor, for your beer and wine license. I, just I mean, it's to really control. academic. I mean, here we are with a lease right. signed by the town of Howitch with, with a, a drawing on it showing the leased area. Right. Uh -huh. Ed? And the, and the lease that we voted to grant him clearly allowed him to set tables and use area in addition. Not exclusively, as we discussed. Mm -hmm. Other people, if I had a, a bag lunch, would be able to sit down on, on right. some of the, the picnic benches, as w we discussed. But, um, but yeah. And we also discussed the fact that we would secure the area that there would be any kind of liquor offered in and the additional seating open to the public. We, back to my question, if you could just give us an idea of what what's we know the seating and now what's open to the public to Larry's point about not restricting you know the bulk of it for the restaurant we want to have well, public access early on unsolicited I offered to put four picnic tables on the lower deck mm -hmm. okay and that was it John said yeah that's a good idea yeah so we have and that got incorporated into the documents. Okay. So we have the four picnic tables on the lower deck, plus we have the other seating areas outside of the scope right. of the mm -hmm. restaurant, which is what I perceive the plan to be. Okay. So, good. You know, we have a lease in front of us. We signed it. We did look at, you know, various maps and such. So <coughs> you know, I guess my question is, uh, Michael? Yeah. You, have, you had a situation where you put out an RFP, I thought there would be multiple bidders. You were all surprised that there weren't multiple bidders. And I can tell you the reason there weren't multiple bidders is because it was a very complex RFP. <coughs> and the proposal that I put forth didn't agree 100% with the RFP. There were some negotiated differences in there, like the lawn area. That was not specific in the RFP. I put it in my proposal. It ended up in the lease also. So, uh, Michael. First, first of all, thank you for your submission, and I don't want my question to get lost. The original RFP that was sent out and that you responded to had an architectural drawing with it, and it had a outline shaded in blue. Outline under in the general the, area. Under the no, it wasn't general area. Sure it is. Well, okay, but let, let all right. Him, so, uh, speak. my question to the town administrator and there's lots of lawyers in the room tonight, maybe somebody else can answer it. Under state law, 
this can be challenged after the fact. People bid on a certain thing, and I would argue that because that was outlined in blue, that the request for proposal, now that it's completely changed and it's almost double the area, can be challenged. And I want to make sure that we're making a decision consistent with the law. That's number one. Number two, because the harbor went through its uh, <coughs> planning process for the harbor, and the Snack Shack restaurant was, was uh, Snack Shack versus restaurant was highly debated, and town meeting ultimately approved a Snack Shack, not a restaurant. 60 seat and 100 seat were voted down by the board. My other question, and it's a legal question, is do you have to go through, or does the town have to go through, the planning process like everybody else does? Or can we circumvent, the, circumvent that process on a restaurant and a pouring license? And I would also argue that, to, to Ed's <coughs> comment, to his comment, because we made a lease last week, doesn't guarantee you a liquor license. That's what the public hearings do. So maybe we did put the cart before the horse, but I'm not in opposition at this point because town meeting voted it. I'm asking two legal questions that so far I'm only getting opinions on. And I'd like to have our council look at the RFP and make sure that it's legal. And I'd like, to un I'd like planning board to waive a site plan for actually what's going on on this property in the defined area that you have. So I don't want to get lost in support or not support. I understand that. I guess I have a question, you know, to weigh in legally. I my understanding was the planning board considered the proposal as a whole, that the planning board considered um, a snack shack. So I, I guess when I'm hearing, I guess they're a little different from the two of you, but that is what is being proposed to you today. So it seems to me that's not a change in use. A site plan would be a, a whole different kind of use that they're asking for. All your, I think the problem is, if I'm listening correctly, is the number of seats. This is exactly the use that the town approved. Just because there's more seats doesn't change the use. I mean, there was always a contemplation, at least my understanding, from the beginning that beer and wine was going to be served at the Snack Shack. There was always an understanding that it was going to be a Snack Shack, and it still is. We're not talking about a bar. You're not talking about inside seating. You're talking about approaching a window and taking food away and sitting down with it, which I would suggest, based on my understanding, with Mr. speaking to Mr. Rendon and Mr. Clark, is that is exactly what's approved. Now, if there's a question about seating, I guess we can have that conversation about whether or not 15 extra seats or 12 extra seats or whatever was contemplated versus was never appearing. But to me, that's not a planning board question when we're getting down to that minutia. You're not going to ask an applicant who's leasing something from the town to expend incredible resources to do a site plan immediately becomes unattractive or less attractive. I, and I think to add to that, we also had the Addison shacks. They were in the plan as well. So overall, the whole entire site was yeah. reviewed to that point. And 60-seat restaurant was, to my take, based on that discussion, was indoor 60-seat restaurant. This is still a snack shack. Yeah, now this we're is talking convenient about seating. Ex outside seating. Ed? Yeah, you know, if, if you separate out the snack shack as having to go through the planning board, then you're saying everything has to go in front of the planning board. The Harbor Master's office clearly didn't go. The Harbor Master's maintenance operation clearly didn't go. The snacks, the uh, artisan shacks, which we're going to dedicate on Friday, clearly didn't go. The ticket offices clearly didn't go. An overall site plan review. Planning board weighed in on an overall plan, and uh, the assumption, obviously, because we've opened up and are operating many of these elements, was that the elements were all approved as an overall plan. John? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, look, this isn't just about a site plan review. Can you tell me where your lease begins and where it ends? Exactly? Yes. It, it's Do you have use and convenience of all the dock area? No. Someone made the comment that it covered the entire marina, but that's not true. The the alcohol delineated area has been drawn on the, on on the architect's plan. That was done by the town. Okay, but that's okay. that's the lease area. Right. My proposal, which got incorporated in the lease, 
included the upper deck, the lower deck, and the adjacent grass area. Are you leasing them? Yes. The whole area. That, yes. that, that was the bid? Yes. And it's in the lease. And 80 seats was in the lease? It's in the lease. 80 seats. The area was in the lease. I don't think we had determined. There was no seats. The number seats of seats weren't in the lease. I my my experience, when, when it comes to seating for restaurants, and by the way, Snack Shack is a restaurant. There's no difference. Serving food, it's a restaurant. It's a ca fast casual type restaurant. The fire department, when you have an enclosed facility, determines the seating inside based on code. Fire code. The exterior area has a, a different separate rating. I'm sure, given the <coughs> area that is within the upper deck, lower deck, and the grass area, the fire department would approve 80 seats. There's no problem there. If you'll excuse me, it has nothing, nothing I'm saying has anything to do with fire capacity. Nothing. Well, they're the ones that approve seating. The, the ABC asks for how many people you're going to be pouring for, and, w and the ABC says that you cannot pour in someone else's area. You, you're actually under obligation to make sure people do not bring beverages to anything other than your area. But I think the lease is consistent. I understand that, and I agree with you, Mr. Howell, but I think the lease is consistent with the area that we're talking about. But that area is bigger than the, le than the area that started in the RFP. Well, that's, that's a separate question, and, but I'm and, saying the lease and what's going to the... And I'm sure you know, because you would have gone through uh, Contracts 101, like I did, that getting 10 widgets and then saying, okay, but I'm going to order a million of them now, the same widgets, but the quantity has everything to do with the scope as well as what it is you're doing. The pouring isn't the, the actual problem here. Who owns what seats is? Because you cannot pour and allow people to, to go in any place other than a controlled area. And by the way, if you're going to be talking about safety, there is a difference. The people inside can stumble around if they, if they need help getting home. The people outside are going to be right next to a dock. So there is a difference. I, I mean, I, I, guess I, I guess you and I just differ a little bit on where it came to. I mean, an RFP is a request for a proposal. I'm not aware that there was any amount of seats that was laid out in the RFP. Proposals, r proposals came in, used the process that the selectmen empowered. The area. Uh, they empowered Mr. Clark and Mr. Rendon to do. He followed that process. He made a proposal. They came to an agreement on something, and then they memorialized it in a lease. And the reason it had to come back to you, and I understand that you voted against it, but the reason it came back to you was because that was the sharpened pencil on the proposal. It was time to approve the lease. And that's what happened last week. And I, I, I'm not saying necessarily, maybe you did put the cart before the horse, but now we're so far down this road with, with, with you know, public hearing, with, at, with, with proposals, with money being spent. It just seems like we're going backwards. And you know, if we want to nail down the area, I mean, the proposal's in front of you. I understand your concerns, but I, I mean, I think the lease speaks for itself at this point. And I think that's what the ABCC wants to see. It has to go with the application. Thank you. Ed? Well, you say that it was uh, approved last week. It actually was approved last monthly meeting. in March. I wasn't here. I yeah. 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 Okay. So, right. it, you know, we approved the lease. You have made improvements and expended money based on us May signing a lease. Opening. Um, right. And, uh, you know, at, at this point, I guess we're having, some of us are having lease less for his remorse. I, I don't know what it is, but um, Michael, I'm not sure what Ed's talking about. Um, the question remains the same. Thank you for your clarification, Matt. On, on, the, on, on the on the outline, I, I wasn't it, involved in the original. No, no, no. I, and I appreciate and certainly do. And I don't want you to think I'm against it. We have an obligation to the town, and we also have an obligation legally as far as the RFP goes. And when you respond to an RFP which I believe uh, somebody stood at the microphone and said that if we advertised that we wanted a bid back for quarter pound cheeseburgers instead of half pound cheeseburgers, that bid could be thrown out. So I'm not trying to be difficult. I don't think the town is covered legally based on the RFP that we put out with the shaded area to now grant you a liquor license to encompass the entire outline that you have. It's just that's, the it's entire that what? I didn't <coughs> outline this. The town outlined it. Okay. So then the town, how the town outlined. That's my, that's my, that's my question, Matt. I can send you the, uh, 
the outline that was in the RFP, I was certainly, that's my problem. And, and right. I understand your problem, and I don't think that you and I are going to get anywhere with that tonight. So, I, and I respect, and I, I certainly respect it. You know, Mr. Griffin makes a proposal based on his, you know, long and hard work with town officials, and now we're left in an unenviable position of sort of defending, you know, the harbor master and his hard work, and defending, you know, the town administrator and his hard work for somebody that, you know, I think did everything that was asked of him. So, thank you. Um, hold on. Ed? Yeah. Um, on the diagram that you have in front of you, and it's included here as part of the lease, um, we show a total of nine tables, um, uh, and presumably the picnic tables seat six persons per table, or 25 for the total, and the other tables show seating of four persons per table for a total of uh, 20, so it's 44 uh, seats um, that are shown. Which, which diagram are you looking at? This, this one. Oh, this one? Yeah. This didn't exist until the lease document. This yeah, has I know, to do with I know. <laughs> <coughs> and I guess my question is, are you, are, uh, by your proposal on the liquor license, are you going to put in another 36 uh, tables or seating tables to seat another 36 people in the area? No. Why don't you just explain where all the tables would be? So, Ma yeah. Madam yes. Chair, if, if I could. You know, one of the things that we're, we're having a little bit of uh, confusion on, I think, and maybe it's from an administration standpoint, when we did the negotiations, we tried to a have the area where the tables would be. So the tables, as you see in this diagram, is in the area. The lawn area was also identified, and then it says a bench. There's a bench that will have tables next to it. In that area is the vast amount of the seating that's going to occur. What the discussion is that John and I had is people are going to walk around and where does it make logical sense for signage to be put up for ABCC to designate the area for them so they could come out if they want to do enforcement, that they, they know where alcohol is allowed and where it's not. So a lot of the areas that you see here are where people are going to wander. I think we wanted to give people the ability to go and walk and look at the harbor while they're eating. So we had that area as the area for enforcement, if you would, and then the tables are primarily in the area that we had negotiated with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, in, in the um, body of the, the lease, it says, uh, you know, non-exclusive use of uh, four picnic tables provided by leasee placed in the flagpole lower deck. And then it goes on to further identify areas on the lower lawn. So yeah. it is in here, mm -hmm. and it's we have a diagram that's mm -hmm. part of the lease. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chair, we keep aligning these things as if they're the same. In the lease, it delineated an area mm -hmm. for seating for food. It said he could apply for a liquor uh, mm -hmm. We did not yeah. pre-approve a liquor license. No, we didn't. I didn't say we did, Don. Okay. The, uh, that that approval is in front of us now, and that approval by the ABCC requires an area to be delineated. They don't delineate it. We delineate I it. I understand mm -hmm. that. And actually. the very essence of but, that license is done, right? you can't wander around with an alcoholic beverage. You're not allowed. No, no, no. So, no, hold on. Hold Nobody on. You are allowed to wander around in the licensed premises. Right, in the premises. And if we <laughs> license this area, they can wander as far as they want, as long as they stay within the license premise. Okay. So that's the lease area now. The, the lease area and the license premise are technically the leased area. Correct. So ultimately, well. we're, we're talking about, and furthermore, in the lease, it specifically says that uh, the leasee shall have the option of placing an out an 8 by 10 outdoor walk-in cooler, blah, blah, blah. So we give them other opportunities for the cooler and other areas that would be negotiable. Then we talk about his ability to apply for a liquor license to serve alcohol and malt beverages, et cetera. So all of this is defined in the lease. I, I don't understand how we're talking about planning board going back specifically for this when we're voting about a liquor license that is defined as, you know, in the lease, in the site plan. 
So we have a, a lease in front of us. We're having a public hearing on the alcohol license, to your point. But this uh, is why people just, are just for, the, just, just for the record, uh, RFP was fairly broad. It's provide at least six, at least six picnic tables. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, the area may have been somewhat, but it certainly was broadly defined. So. Michael? Alan, I'm going I'm to I'm say it one last time. We sent out an RFP <coughs> with an outlined area. That RFP went out to the public and anyone could have responded. It should be reasonably assumed that other people would respond if they knew the area that they were leasing was twice the size. And I don't believe under the procurement laws that we can have a map in there and negotiate double the space after the fact. That's my only objection. So Larry's point, I'm understand. planning. I understand. Well, we're saying also at least six, at least at six least. tables, right? If the so diagram was wrong, so the area you couldn't fit no, six I, tables. I got that, that but, the, but the wording yeah. itself was really broad. Right. Okay. Both. Um, you know, I am a certified procurement officer. I have been for nine years. So, you know, I understand. You can give people, and in the RFP, it said here's the area, and then subject to negotiation. Subject to negotiation means subject to negotiation. And as I indicated, most of the area is walking area and the tables are what we haven't talked about. So I feel very secure, and Coleman and Page did well, review the RFP before it went out. We need okay. to, have we opened yeah. to public hearing? Yeah, well, we, do, is there anybody from the public who'd like to speak, Tom? On, on the, I understand the ABCC. I've been uh, in fire service 41 years, been a chief officer at 10. I understand who controls square footage of seating and tables and how many people can be there. It's not the ABCC, it's me and the building commissioner. Be clear. So there's plenty of area there. We haven't put, uh, that has not been in question <coughs> on the number of the formula for seating or standing. Uh, I have a question. Is the area where there will be alcohol served controlled by a fence? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's part of the, what we look at when we, uh, for instance, Ember, we, we go down and do the inspection. It's controlled, it's safe, not, and it's not approved. Presently. Yeah, it's not it currently. But he's going right. to, on his own. Right. The other thing is that as a citizen, uh, uh, I don't own a boat. I don't plan to own a boat, but I enjoy the harbor. And through this whole process, I expected at some point to be able to get down and get a hamburger and a beer. And I hope when we leave tonight, I'll be able to get down this spring and enjoy that beautiful harbor and get a hamburger and a beer. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, any further discussion by the public? Hi, I'm Melanson, West Harwich, uh, Granick Road. Um, you guys keep talking about consistency, but there seems to be nothing consistent about this entire thing. As a voter, I was proposed a snack shack. And Mr. Griffin is right. It's a duck. It quacks like a duck. It's a restaurant. You threw in a snack shack to the voters. We're thinking a hamburger, a hot dog, something like White House Field. And now you've got the guy coming in here saying he needs 80 seats, knowing that 30% of your business comes from alcohol. Why in your right mind would you sign a lease without having the liquor license in hand? We broke it in to the two. So he's responding the way he should be accordingly. So now the shack has gone up to an 80-seat restaurant. It's a snack shack, and you can call it the restaurant, whatever way you want to call it. It's an outdoor seating. It's not an indoor 80-seat restaurant. Okay. We, 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 can, we can both debate that. All right. No, I, I hope this gentleman can enjoy his beer. So. And I his, look forward and to his, it as well. And his so. <laughs> hamburger. I mean, the harbor master's for it. I figured you guys would be more boats, not more restaurants in the harbor. No, I don't have a vote, and I'm with the chief. Oh. John? Um, just to be clear, you know, this gentleman said he thought it was going to be a hamburger and hot dog. Um, you know, I, I think we've been very clear throughout this process that we were going to have hot and cold food, that it was going to be, you know, uh, oven and fryer later, and we were going to serve, uh, you know, whoever the leasee was at the time, who knew who it was, but the plan was, that we were going to have uh, hot and cold food, just like is being proposed. So, you know, just because one person might think that, I think we've been very consistent in the numerous public meetings that we've had over the last two and a half years 
of what we intended for a snack shack. Thank you, John. <coughs> the menu was, was spelled out in the RFP. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, Tom Sherry, South Harwich. Uh, I'm looking at the diagram from the packet. If you fence this off, now we have the stairways coming up, everything else is closed in that you can have alcohol in. So if I'm there with little children, where on this entire structure that my taxes are paying for can I walk without having my kids come into contact with alcohol? Other than the restrooms, and now you're telling me that people who are going to go to that window and get a beer, and now if they, according to your lines, if they walk to the bathroom with a beer, they're, they're against the law. These lines are not making sense at all. Walk to the bathroom with a beer? If, if they... If they're in the enclosed area, looking at the do, diagram, do you want to uh, not? Any you, can't, you can't walk to the yeah. You can't walk to the bathroom, with, the bathroom That's with the not beer. part of the. Area. You're not supposed to. Yes, and I can't now. If he's saying he's going to fence it off, the lawn area, the, just the lawn area, just the lawn area, just the lawn area. Well, the rest of it is basically fenced because of the railing system. But the open stairways. That again, if I want to come up there with small children and not come in contact with alcohol, there's no place on this structure I cannot no. not come in contact with. Ed, I mean, if you if we're worried about that, then we should probably shut down uh, the the uh, food concession at Cranberry Valley because there's no way that you can take your children in to have have uh, uh, lunch there without coming in co contact, and that's a public facility too. Yeah, it is, but this is something we want to draw people to. You have the artist shack, you have a lot of people who were expecting to come to that harbor. Right, and, and people And he's taking up this entire deck. Okay. Okay. The deck is going to be open to the public, as I understand it. People, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. you know, whether, whether they buy something or not. I mean, I can't put up a no admittance sign or, yeah. or, or, or a gate. Right. right. All I can do is keep my patrons from exiting yes. with any alcohol. With any alcohol, right. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Madam Chair, uh, have, if, if there's no, no, one, no further testimony from the public, I move we close the public hearing. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion by the board? No. Okay. Public hearing is closed. <coughs> and Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion. Backing up. Well, uh, I'll move while I was looking at it. Uh, I'll move that we approve the application for a seasonal common victor wine and malt beverages license for Dockside Seafood Shack, 715A, Route 28, Joseph Griffiths, manager. Second. We've been seconded. Uh, and let me just comment. I, you know, my, as I said initially, my, my main concern that it would be open to the public. Uh, so I think you've answered that. John? Just a question uh, for, for the motion that's on the table. What are we sending to the ABCC? They need a description of the locus. It's what's in our packet. What's in our packet. I guess they will rule on that if they don't like it. Right. The map, too. The map and the description. Mm -hmm. yeah. Michael? And just uh, to be clear, yeah. I'm not against what you're doing. Oh, okay. uh, I'm, again, I, I'm, I'm questioning the RFP that went out and people responded to it and the legality of that. I'm not a procurement officer for 20 years or whatever Chris has been. That seems to be an internal problem. But um, call, it what it, call it what you know. <laughs> um, I'm not a certified procurement officer, but procurement is very simple. We propose one thing to the public and we're giving something else. So that's my only comment. Okay. Not against you, not against your project. Well, I'm the innocent victim. Leave, 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 leave. Sure. <laughs> All right, so moved and seconded, hmm. correct? Correct. N any other discussion? Well, just another comment. Um, when the 
this was being proposed several years ago um, uh, uh, as a uh, snack shack and uh, potentially with uh, uh, beer and wine service. My, the way I sort of envisioned it is Liam's, that Nosset Beach, with the ability to sell beer and wine. I mean, Liam's has a very full menu. It wasn't just hot dogs and hamburgers. It was, but it, to call it anything other than a snack shack, um, it, it was sort of the uh, quintessential uh, Cape Cod snack shack, and I'm glad to see that the type of menu that you're proposing um, is going to fulfill that. That's casual. Yep. Okay, so moved and seconded. No further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Three to two. That's mine. <clears throat> Thank you, and Thank we you. look forward to I think, the um, opening. Just as a procedural point, um, you need to take a vote on the manager as well, of oh. record. Thank you. <coughs> Madam Chair, I'd move that we approve um, Joseph. Joseph W. Griffiths as manager of Dockside Seafood Shack. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain. Thank you, Madam Thank Chairman. You. Members Thank of the board. I also yeah. just want to add something. We have, <laughs> yeah. have a million dollar liquor liability and a $3 million umbrella policy. Thank That's you. That's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. And best of luck. <coughs> okay. Now we're going to go on to our next uh, public hearing. <coughs> Excuse me. Application for alterations of premises to liquor license for Parks 545, Route 28, Taylor Powell Management. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening, Chair, members of the board, Attorney Matthew Fitzsimmons of West Yarmouth, counsel for Taylor Powell and his uh, business perks, joined by Taylor Powell. Uh, we come before you this evening, uh, Taylor is the owner, operator, and manager of, of uh, perks in Harwichport. He's seeking your approval this evening for renovations to the pre-existing uh, front space uh, at the property. And uh, in, uh, in seeking this approval, um, the Board of Health procedurally has already uh, reviewed and approved the front space, which would allow for a total of um, six additional seats to the establishment as it currently is. Uh, I don't want there to be mis any misunderstanding with the um, uh, submission as to what is before the board this evening. Uh, the modification is a combination of the layout of where tables currently sit, as well as uh, uh, six additional seats, no more. Uh, the uh, establishment has a very clean record with the ABCC uh, and with no infractions or incidences uh, since they've held their liquor license. Uh, yeah. As part of the proposal, uh, all signage uh, as required by the ABCC would be posted uh, both in the, in the current space as well as what is noted on the, on the existing property already as, as, uh, as that signage currently exists in the ABCC approved uh, area. Uh, in the design, if we're looking at it, uh, the space is, the, is a forward space that historically is, has had a uh, series of uses, both retail and many years ago, uh, uh, Mermaids by the CT room. Uh, so it has had in, in its history use as, as part of a uh, food service establishment. Uh, the uh, uh, issue is not, uh, before the board, is not any modification to the building or the structure as it's currently demarked or as, uh, as the footprint is set. It's simply use of the forward space within the building. Um, the, uh, uh, not only gonna, does it. I'm just oh, going to stop you for yeah. one second because we need to read the public hearing oh. notice, which we I'm did sorry. not. No, I'm sorry. I'm very we sorry. I stepped right in. Way, Certainly. So nope, go I ahead. Apologize. Legal notice, Town of Harwich application for alteration of premises for liquor license. Notice is hereby given under Chapter 138 of the General Laws as amended. That application has been made to this board for an alternation of premises for the seasonal general on premise all alcohol beverage license now held by Go Industries Inc., DBA Perks, Taylor Power Manager on the premise at 545 Route 28, Harwichport. Applicant is seeking to alter premise as follows Serving area, cafe located on first floor of building with three entrances and four exits. Mm -hmm. Front room with three entrances and three exits with indoor seating, tables and counter bar 
total indoor square feet is 2,230 square feet. Patio and porch area with exterior seating tables. Total outdoor square foot is 2,406. Outside area consists of musician area, fire pit, outside bar, outside seats, tables, all totaling 39 seats on the property. The Board of Selectmen will hold a hearing upon the application on Monday, April 29th, no earlier than 6.30 p.m. in the Don B. Griffin Room at Town Hall, 732 Main Street, Harwich, at which time all interested parties will be heard, signed the Harwich Board of Selectmen acting as the local licensing authority, printed in the Cape Cod Chronicle April 18th and the Cape Cod Times April 16th. Thank you, Ed, and I'll go back to, sorry to interrupt. So, not, at all, not at all, and, and uh, in, in the interest of, of time, too, if there are any questions that the board may have about the use of the space, um, myself and, and uh, Mr. Powell are available for any questions that you may have on it. Um, but again, the, the, um, the modification here to the current license and, and, and um, use of the building is to use an existing space within the building that otherwise has not, has not been um, uh, uh, used uh, previously for uh, the restaurant, but is adjacent to it, and it allows for uh, a good flow within the building and is only a modification of uh, six seats. Thank you. Yes. Questions from the board? Well, as you know, we, uh, we have a lot of concern about noise. Bob mentioned it earlier. Let me ask you a question about that. Does the uh, increase of inside space, will that increase the uh, use of the outside patio? In other words, more, more patrons going from inside to outside contribute to that noise. And uh, will they be allowed to have uh, uh, carry beer back and forth that would also contribute to that? I mean, my question is, is it going to increase controlling the noise volume out there by having this inside space. It, it might actually help it. People can go inside and the noise doesn't carry out. Okay. That'd be my answer. It might actually help it. Uh, and you're going to do uh, what to uh, encourage that? Well, if it rains, everyone's going to stay inside that night. I got that. But I mean, <laughs> when it doesn't rain. I, we try to keep noise levels at a respectful level and we'll continue to do so. Uh, Last summer, we have zero infractions with anything related to our music or our noise whatsoever. So we're looking for another. So it doesn't program. increase the patio outside. It doesn't increase that no, space. No, that, that space we're already allowed mm -hmm. for. We're looking for the front room. We're already licensed for our porch, our rear porch area and our patio. We're looking to add just a small square footage, which is the front room that's already existing. What, does that give you an opportunity to move basically the music inside and not do it outside if you have more space? Oh, we'd have to go for that license. That's a different license and a different hearing. Right. But we'd move it inside and would help the uh, noise level yes. in the area if you did that. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Michael? I have nothing. Ed? Well, uh, just a minor point in your application backing up to it. Um, your application says applying to use the front room and remainder of the porch for services. They are currently under the same roof and located on the same licensed premises. And uh, in fact, those areas have never been part of the licensed premise, the front room. The, the porch has, the, on our current license says use of rear porch. But not the front porch. Correct. Okay. So, um, anyway, and then I guess it, uh, the other question I have is given uh, you now have an uh, in interior uh, room uh, that could be, uh, music could be played in. Um, we, are, we are in the process of uh, considering entertainment license on another establishment in town and there's a request that we be consistent in how we apply our regulations there. We're talking about um, uh, one of the options being presented is to limit the outside playing of music from four to eight and eight to whatever the closing hour is we decide on to be done inside. Um, that would be if we if we if we have the option 
the ability in granting this expansion to make it conditional on modifying the uh, entertainment license. And, you know, it's hard to uh, uh, look at the other property and say, well, we're going to treat you differently than, than we are here. We have neighbors in both areas that are making the same complaints, and I don't see how we listen to one set of neighbors and not the other. Thank you, Ron. John? No questions? Um, I have a couple questions. Uh, so in terms of the going back to the porch, um, the front porch, there'll be nothing going on out in the front porch, correct? There, there's will be signage there that depicts you cannot leave the yeah, property can't. without with, with an alcoholic beverage purchase on our property and no outside drinks to be allowed in. We currently have that signage. We're going to put more signage up. Okay. Also, staff members patrolling that and ensuring that doesn't happen. And uh, as far as I understand, in terms of the, there's going to be a bathroom added for the public's use? Uh, not for the public, for patron use. Sorry, patron use. Yeah. That's what I, thank you for that clarification. But for patronage. Yes. Um, and then the only other question, back to the noise um, that we've had issues in town, not just you, obviously. Uh, we've had several different issues come up. But, um, how, how much closer on the indoor, which to, to your point, Larry, about uh, bringing maybe the music in, and I understand that's a different license, but bringing music inside eventually to maybe reduce some of those. Does that, but indoors, does that put you, I'm just trying to think prox proximity-wise, what is to the left of you on that, like close, are you, are you right next to um, Fort there? The yeah, budding property yeah, to the Fort restaurant, and if you're facing the building, that'd be on our right. Yeah. And if you're facing the building on the left is uh, what used to be an inn, which is the Greg Hall that's no, not operable at, that, I think, at the moment. Okay. All right. That's all the questions I have. Are there any so uh, I guess the question for Chris and procedurally, um, can we bring this uh, back to uh, consider the uh, music license, the entertainment license then? Yeah, in, in terms of... Uh, to conform with what uh, we've done the other place and have it moved from outside in, you know, that whole discussion? Yes, I, I think two comments. Uh, one, in terms of, I, I think that the uh, front part of the building has been desired to have a reuse, and I think this makes sense as a reuse. Uh, the yeah. big concern that I had was on the septic, mm -hmm. but they did go to the Board of Health, and the Board of Health approved a septic for the commercial level, uh, so they can expand in. The Board of Health did also have a limit for seating uh, as it relates to uh, the septic system of 39 so that's why you see the 39 seats mm -hmm. uh, in terms of you know this uh, to the second part of the question uh, they are not here tonight specifically for the entertainment license uh, but the entertainment license is along that stretch because the previous seating was all outside it was only just outside was how that was licensed mm -hmm. i think having an inside option would allow us to be more consistent with the other establishments and have for the, the later evening activity inside and then stick to, for this section, it's actually 10 o'clock is what the board has previously approved mm -hmm. on the uh, outside. So uh, they certainly would have the option. I think historically we've had people do the liquor first and then come back for the entertainment second. So uh, that they're so doing it in two they pieces. Come back to us yeah, the fact they're doing it in two pieces tends to be the traditional <coughs> way things are done in Hollywood. I also think we need to, to be careful in terms of we had all the businesses um, come in with their revised site plans, you know, see, showing where they had seating, et cetera. <coughs> I just want to make sure that we update, if, if it's a positive yeah. outcome, that we would update that plan so that that's what's on record. Yeah, just to that point, uh, there were bars that were added in those three establishments that were not in the original site plan for those three establishments, and the three establishments did go back to planning board and, mm -hmm. and correct that mm -hmm. uh, element. I think in all three cases, there were outdoor bars mm -hmm. uh, that we were right. kind of targeting, if you would, uh, to make sure that we had that for the liquor license. As long as this plan is consistent with what the planning board has previously approved, um, and then I think that would be a, a sound, a sound strategy to stick to what the planning board has previously yeah. approved. Okay, thank you, Chris. Any other discussion from the board? Any? And uh, sorry, any discussion from the public? Yeah, a couple of questions. Bob Nickerson, Howard Sport. Um, one is thirty-nine the limit of the number of people that can go into the establishment? I believe that's the number of seats. Seats. Is that the number of people? Yeah. The, the answer is no. 
uh, the, the 39 seats would be limited in terms of uh, what the board sets for ABCC regulations and for the septic system, but it does not allow for occupancy. There is no guideline other than what the fire chief had mentioned earlier and the building official that the occupancy is the number of people that can stand in a certain area. So we could have 100 people in there. But the septic system is only good for 39, so I guess the rest of them have to wait. Um, Okay, the second question I have is the planning board is having a meeting in two weeks on this. So I guess, how do you vote on it? I don't know the procedures. How do you vote on this if they haven't had this planning board meeting? This is for the liquor license and the uh, okay. board votes the liquor license. Oh, so you're only voting for the liquor license, not the seating. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, Cindy Williams, Executive Director of the Hartwich Chamber. Quick question. I believe a couple of the businesses are in the room tonight. They all have already been approved and we already have um, time constraints that we've all agreed on over the last couple of years on bylaws. Are we now looking, if I've just heard correctly, we're now gonna change everyone possibly to eight o'clock? Just wanna double check because we're working on something else in another location of town because of some other issues um, to eight o'clock. But now I just wanna conf just make sure we all understand what we're looking at. Chris. Madam Chair, it's, it's my understanding from the board's action previously that Harwich Port is being considered separately in terms of the time restriction and on a uh, as needed or on an individual basis for the other locations. Right. Just wanted to make sure, because what I'm hearing back here from others, we just want to make sure that that is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good evening, <clears throat> Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Ray Tomlinson. I'm counsel for the Port and Ember restaurants. Um, before you earlier today, I delivered a letter speaking to uh, both establishments, formal objection to Perk's uh, alteration of its premises. Mr. Powell also received a copy via email. In that letter, was an issue with respect, uh, Mr. Powell shaking his head no, I emailed it to the email address that was included in the Board of Health file for uh, Mr. Powell that he had communicated with members of the board and uh, with Megan Eldridge, the health director, uh, concerning the Board of Health. Um, I have a copy uh, for he and his attorney if they would like to receive it. Certainly. One of the first issues that my correspondence earlier today was uh, was really directed towards uh, Selectman McCaskill because of a personal relationship that we believe exists with Mr. Powell uh, and a relationship uh, with one of his employees. Um, I neglected to invite Mr. McCaskill to state on the record whether or not he believes that he can be objective in this manner given the interaction that he has had with Mr. Powell and with the proprietors of my, my client's restaurants. If he is so comfortable and deems fit to uh, maintain his objectivity, then I have no objection to his deliberation or voting on this matter. Absolutely. I have, a, I have the same relationship with your clients. Okay. Fair enough. Um, moving on to the substantive factors that, that my clients um, object to the alteration of the premises focuses principally on two issues. Obviously, this board has very uh, uh, heightenedly today discussed the issue of noise. In particular, uh, Perks has, although it bills itself as a coffee shop and a beer garden, historically during the very busy weeks of the summer, bring live bands. There are uh, issues of overcrowding and intoxication. We have problems with patrons urinating and vomiting around my client's business. We have excessive barrels of trash and rodents that are appearing in the uh, trash barrels that block the emergency egress. And there are false claims of <coughs> noise complaints that emanate uh, from the proprietors themselves against my client to help deflect some of the noise issues that my client is blamed for. And I know that while there have been no ABCC infractions in the past year, certainly the town is cognizant of the number of noise violations. This has been a repeated problem with respect to perks from 2015 through 2017. They lost their license for one day last year uh, with respect to that noise. And that unfortunately negatively, in, negatively impacts other establishments in town. Um, my clients work very hard. They're not infallible, but they work very hard to make sure that they are compliant with that. Uh, but there's an issue with respect to Mr. Powell's 
um, quite frankly, his fitness and character as my clients see fit with respect to his operation as the manager of record. There are instances, as I've reported, and, and people here today are available to testify to the board to that with respect to Mr. Powell's uh, outcries and, and <coughs> verbal abuse and profanity and actions directed towards uh, the brackets as operators of Port Ember about actions by their employees to send patrons over to use the restrooms at my client's facility because there is no public restroom at Perks. Um, Ironically, I, I had the occasion to Attorney watch. Tomlinson, yes. if I may, I only, I, I must stand up for my client and ask that I feel at this point, given the type of, type of rendition of my client that's being presented before, not only this board, but before the public this evening, that it goes without saying that a presentation that happened to be emailed to, to my client that he does not believe he's received and for me to the opportunity to have a chance to review and discuss with you, that the venue at this time is, is, is not appropriate. Well. Attorney Fitzsimmons, with respect to client's with, position, with, with but, I understand, but the distance oh. to which you're, oh, you're now on. raising some objections is actually quite personal to my client. I can and appreciate an opportunity that. should be heard. And this is a, this is a public, public forum. Hearing. This is a public Thank hearing, duly noticed, where, uh, as, as you I know, Attorney Fitzsimmons, as you know, under the law, one of the issues that the board must consider as the local licensing authority is the character and fitness of the manager of record. And there is, there is duly documented evidence. And, uh, you, you know, with respect to, with respect well, to hold the on, one, yes. one moment. So yes. Attorney is, Tomlinson, this, I've this oh, is oh, a sorry. public yeah. hearing. Yes. And it's our meeting. And it's our meeting. So we will ask you respectfully yes. to listen to the board and take direction from the board. One thing, I, one thing I will comment on is this is the first we've seen of this letter as well. And although it is a public hearing and you have that right to deliver that information to us, I will say it would have been more helpful to the board to have time to read this document. We haven't even all been able to read the document. Respectfully. So that, that's one comment. Respectfully, Madam Chair, obviously my client was afforded notice of this hearing by certified mail on Thursday of last week. So the ability to be able to research all of that. The second point is that uh, I had submitted a formal request, a show cause hearing in 2017 to this very board discussing the very same noise issues and very same allegations. So this is not the first time that this issue has come before Understood. the board. However, it is the first time that my clients have been afforded an opportunity to speak to these issues. So respectfully, I would be afforded the opportunity to do that. Certainly, Attorney Fitzsimmons would be afforded the same opportunity. I would simply ask to not be interrupted. So that's fine. So we, you'll have a chance to respond. But at this point, it is a public hearing. Well, I understand that entirely, but my frustration is procedurally the fact that we've been sitting in the room for an hour, an hour and a half, and we had the opportunity to address this privately outside in the hallway, as we usually would do in the course of, of, of representing clients and trying to obtain, you know, work, work toward a, a, a result that we actually understand what we're about to be presented with, rather than the last minute I'm presented with what, what appears to me in large part is a, a, a smear of my client, whether way, based in, in, in fact or, or, or not. My concern is that uh, th th a decision about a, um, a, a the neither neither the manager's position is at weight at this moment. What's before the board this evening is a change of the number of seats. Mm -hmm. I understand this board may, may or Attorney Tomlinson may take the position that the the um, veracity and, and credibility of my client may be a role as far as how many seats he can manage within the establishment, but I can tell you by the record of the ABCC, he, held, he holds a, a clean license. I've represented my client now for a couple of years on various boards before the town. We have dealt with noise issues. They've been noise issues, not alcohol issues. Understood. And so I, I just, I, I have a, a, a sincere <coughs> concern for my client who sits before you today as really one who, in his heart, wants to do well and be a good business in Harwardport. I come from the town of Yarmouth, and I can say that that in, 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 in along Route 28, the Board of Selectmen have worked very, very hard to try to establish a town center. And when we see Harwich Port and the other businesses that are here this evening, the port, the others, Ember, I, I'm really surprised at the type of presentation this evening when, when really there's an opportunity for partnership in the community. So uh, the alternative is if, if, if we were to continue this, but I don't think that that's helpful to Mr. Powell at, at this point. I just, I want to get along with my neighbors. I don't want the bullying to continue. This is bullying. This is 13 pages of defamation. He, he, he has yeah. threatened to set, shut me down, and I have proof of that, too. I'm not going to go there. I just want this to stop. So we'll continue with the hearing. I, I'm, yes, I'm giving you the we'll opportunity. Continue with the hearing, and I, I'll just and, preface. And oh, yeah. Just, yeah, just. Let's, uh, so okay. we'll just move forward. Okay. Thank Very you. Very well. Madam Chair, again, on the record, 
I have previously raised these concerns to this board. Mr. Powell is well aware of these concerns. I've spoken with him previously and privately about these concerns. I did email him to the only email address that I have, which is the one with, with which he communicates with town officials. If he did not receive that via email, I can't apologize for that. I put this letter together yesterday over the span of almost 10 hours. This is an extensive amount of work and research that goes into the history. Respectfully, as the local licensing authority, an issue with respect to any license, alteration or a new license, deals extensively with approval of the manager of records, fitness and character to serve. And this is not a smear campaign. The fact that Mr. Powell seeks to have, bring before this board the alteration of premises and the description, he opens himself to that discussion. And quite frankly, in a very small community in which we all work and play, there needs to be an assurance that what started out as a three bedroom house on a septic system that was given a variance at no more than 482 gallons per day has now grown to a 39 seat restaurant that is being billed as a coffee shop that has live bands that pack 200 people in outside. There's extensive noise complaints. And quite frankly, there's been no review whatsoever by a building that is a century or more old and routinely packs people on the porch, on the front porch, on the side porch. They don't use the existing area that is currently used for storage. But this question about whether or not there's sufficient seats and the Board of Health approved the septic has absolutely nothing to do with the occupant load, the public safety, the proximity to 28, the dangerousness with which there's no emergency egress. It's an entire fenced in property. They have live music outside. There is an issue with respect to whether or not the premises, the description of the premises is accurate and that's fully set forth uh, in my correspondence. And certainly if Mr. Powell has any issue with respect to my correspondence, it would be incumbent upon him to ask this board for a continuance to be able to fully and properly uh, present a defense there too if necessary. But this was a duly noticed public hearing. <coughs> I, my, quite frankly, my clients were entitled to come in here, take the podium and raise these issues without having any writing before this board. And I'm not suggesting that we're trying to play, you know, trial by sabotage here. That is not the case. But there is a long history of building code violations, safety violations. There's no emergency egress. There's no sprinklers in this, in, in this building. There is a significant concern with respect to the detrimonious effects on the public safety by granting this expanded license at this time. I would suggest to this board that the prudent process in course is to defer any decision until building and planning has had a, a formal opportunity to review the proposed use and how it's going to impact ultimately what is the description of the premises. Because quite frankly, whatever this board approves today or doesn't approve today, after planning and building have had their opportunity to review, we may be back again utilizing more resources of the town with respect to yet again a modified alteration of the premises. <coughs> Is there any questions the board may have of me before I ask if my clients are willing to uh, speak to that? Any questions from the board? No. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no. Thanks. Anybody else from the public wish to speak? Uh, to the board, I just want to, in general terms, let everybody know uh, uh, we will be inviting, uh, Chief of Police will be inviting to the public safety complex as we did last year, all these folks, all the establishments to come in and have a sit down, with fire, police, building, planning, as we did last year. So we set, set the rules out so everybody understands answer questions, talk about concerns, expectations from all, all, the, all the boards. We also do uh, random unannounced inspections throughout the season, throughout the season. And my only rule is if you inspect one, you inspect them all. ABCC does the same thing. Generally, we're, we're granted a uh, courtesy call that they're going to be in town. But, other than it's, but uh, the point being is it's not the wild, wild west out there come June 1st. We're on it. Your, your public safety folks, your planning and your building are aware of what's going on and we, we strongly uphold what the town has asked us to enforce and we do. And I'll tell you, the, the, the folks that uh, these businesses, 
we don't have problems. They're, they've all, I'm, I'm just speaking globally. Mm -hmm. They're all good people and they're all, all trying to do a good thing for the community. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate that. Anybody else from the public wish to speak? I'm going to go back to the board. Any other questions from the board? Nothing? Okay. Anyone want to? We want to. Okay. John? Just one quick question through you, Madam Chair. Yes. You do have a hearing uh, that's scheduled for the planning board? Yes, sir. That's and correct. that is? May 14th. Okay. Any other? And uh, that's a, a site plan review hearing or what? The nature of the. That's correct. An initial uh, uh, site plan had been submitted. Some requests from the town planner for some revisions. Those revisions are pre being prepared uh, by uh, a Down Cape Engineering and will be resubmitted prior to, I believe it's May 6th, by which the, that revised plan needs to be submitted before the May 14 hearing. 5-6 okay. by the 5 14. And they were very minimal details, just some questions about exact, exact labeling within the site plan and the like so that it would meet the conformity requirements. Okay. Any other questions from the board? In terms of in terms of this again before us is the six additional seats. Right. And the impact. I move that we close the public hearing. Thank you. Yeah. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion before we close the public hearing? Okay, we're closing the public hearing. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, so, um, Ed, yeah. Go ahead. Well, Sorry. you know, my comment is, uh, and I respect the uh, the different views, is that this is for a liquor license. We'll come back and review the seating, the uh, entertainment coming forward. So this is actually fairly narrow, and I and I think our intent is to come back and, and concern ourselves with the noise level that Bobby you mentioned and how we control that. I have a question for the uh, fire chief, Norm. Uh, you guys, I understand the 39 seats, but you do set a, an occupancy uh, number as well, do you not? That's going to have to be reviewed. Yeah, clearly. I, I so have, I'd have to check with the fire inspector in the building your commissioner. Term, it's not the Wild West. You do set an occupancy per Absolutely. number at the, some the point. The square footage will be measured, and uh, uh, standing seats and tables will be, we'll have to take a look at that, make sure that it's going to meet code, okay. safety code. Right, thank Absolutely. you. I just wanted to clarify that, that. Yeah, and that will all be part of their planning board review. Absolutely. So. Yeah. I have, I, I would not necessarily see that, but I, I certainly am going to have fire prevention and building commission. But it's done. It. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Are you, uh, are you aware of the exiting? Uh, yeah. Is it, uh, um, adequate. I know it. I'm, I, I can't. I'm, I'd have yeah. to see a plan. I'm gonna. Uh, uh, I can't speak right now uh, uh, on that. But <clears throat> I, I assure you that exiting is a, it will be addressed. Okay. They have to have to meet the exits uh, per the safety code. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Any other? Do you have anything? No? I, just. I do have a comment. Uh, for whatever motion is going to be made. I, I endeavor to be consistent, and in, in, in this isn't derogatory to the applicant, but I, as I said before, I said last year, and I said the year before, these things are built on something. Uh, when you send something to ABCC, you're supposed to have an approved uh, locus, which would mean that you should be going to the planning board first, and then here. So. I would be inclined to entertain this if that were to occur first, but not at, not this way. So I'm, j I'm still going to vote against this to also be for the same reason. Could I respond to that yeah. point real quick? Last year when we had to do <coughs> our reauthoration of premise, which we did, and so did uh, Ember Restaurant and the Port Restaurant, mm -hmm. all three of those hearings were held here first, and secondly, the follow-up hearing was with the planning. So. This board did approve reauthoration of premise three and times. To remind you, I voted against all three of oh, them okay, at the same know. time for I'm that sorry, same reason. I, just, okay. I, just, I didn't know if you knew. I was just. So. Uh, Chris? I guess I will kind of weigh in a little bit. I, I did have an opportunity to, to read through the 10-page the ten, ten uh, memo that was submitted. I, I just I want to make a, just a couple comments. I, I do hesitate a little bit. I think that the planning board uh, input would be helpful just to make sure that there's, there's no compliance issues. Having a little bit of a delay, I, I think, does make some sense. 
Uh, I also, the board has, uh, in the five and a half years I've been here, I think almost all the time appointed me as a hearing officer. So I've had plenty of hearings. I've, I've heard a lot of the material. And, you know, one of the things that I think about, a lot of the comments that were raised was 2016, 2017, and, and past history. You know, those were adjudicated. And, you know, I think relatively fair uh, resolution was made and was presented to the board, and, and the board voted those uh, resolutions. So I, I'd hate to have a characterization that there was outstanding issues that, from my perspective, and I hopefully from the police chief's perspective, you know, that we have a, 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 a licensee that's in good standing, at least from the town's perspective. Mm -hmm. Because he is looking at something different and something new, I think getting planning board input in light of the bar and, and some of the others, it does make sense to have that be adjudicated by planning board. So maybe a continuance to after the planning board hearing may be in, in order. So the planning board hearing is on 514, so that would continue it on to the 20th. I, I, I'm trying to hit the summer and not go into next year with my hearings and everything. And I don't think this is, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's necessary. I think that since the three hearings last year were a reauthorization of premise that you suggested to us, and we all did exactly what you said, and then it went to planning. That you guys have the authority here tonight to do it. And I don't think I'm doing anything differently than the hot stove saloon taking over the real estate office next door and now that's part of their serving area. The port restaurant taking over an art gallery next door and now that's part of their serving area. Red's Pizza taking over the next door retail space and making it part of their service area. I just want to be given the same same rights that my neighboring businesses have and I think we put together a good pre presentation before you within the laws and hopefully you can find it in your heart to vote in our way because July 4th is coming. And to prolong the hearing, and by the time the state gets it, ABCC takes over six weeks. And then you just, th then the summer's gone. Right, which is earlier why, why I mentioned the continuance and whether or not you wanted to do that. So I understand the need for, for urgency. Yeah. Uh, I look to the board in the sense of, you know, what's the um, overall feel of the board in terms of continuing or is only a well, motion? Well, Madam Chair, my, my concern is less the issues um, that are be taken up by the planning board. Um, I, you know, I don't know to know what issues they're talking about, but from my uh, knowledge of having been through a number of application procedures on commercial properties, I can't imagine any of any of the things they'll be dealing with would affect uh, the. Uh, the uh, determination of expanding uh, the license premise. Um, what is of concern of me, though, however, is you know when we uh, granted when was granted the uh, original uh, entertainment license, you know there was uh, only um, uh, basically outside area available for that entertainment to occur, and that's where it was licensed. And now that there is for the later uh, as you move into the later evening on a, an area inside where that uh, noise, uh, the music, no, sound of music could be contained, I, th I would be um, very much interested in looking at uh, modifying the entertainment license along with granting the change in uh, uh, the license premise or make it contingent on an application coming in to modify that. Thank you, Ed. Michael? Just so, just so I'm clear, Ed, are you proposing that we change their entertainment license now because they want six more seats and not look at the other businesses in Harrodsport and not have them well, on the system? You know, you can... Uh, just a question. Yes, um, quite honestly, they, they are asking for something new and putting themselves up to review. Um, at this point, none of the other businesses are asking for something new and putting themselves up to review. It's unfortunate the way it happens, but, um, uh, you know, uh, the fellow that uh, down in West Harwich is, you know, establishing a, a new business, and he's getting sub subjected to a process. Larry, did you have another comment? No, I think... Uh, 
you know, I recognize you don't want to lose the season, so uh, I would move approval of the uh, uh, or, uh, for the alteration uh, alteration of premises of the seasonal general uh, alcoholic beverages license uh, by Go Industries, known as Perks, uh, Taylor Powell manager on the premises of 545 Route 28, Howardsport. Uh, contingent, as uh, has been suggested, contingent on uh, uh, coming back with a plan to move the music inside. Well, technically, he does have that application. It's not in front of us at the moment. It's, 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 it's not, but I can make a contingent that comes it's back to us, point. right? No. I think you can make a contingent uh, upon the submission of an application. Oh, the submission of it. Internal well, and approval by the planning board. And approval by the planning right. board. I mean, if you made it to discussion. both of those. Both of those. That's consistent. Uh, that'd be consistent. Yeah. And then that helps us on the uh, on the other issues. So that's my. Okay. Go ahead. So to be clear, your motion is um, pending approval by the planning board and an entertainment license coming to bring the music in inside. Correct. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. Can I? I just want to make. Oh, I'm sorry. I I only want to know what the board is about to present. Are you suggesting that the that it, that my client simply apply to have the option? Of having having an entertainment license, so as to have the option to bring music inside when. No, no. I'm, I'm suggesting no that you uh, I propose to bring it inside entirely. Uh, we, we, we're not that here was to what to was about to be moved by the board. That's I think not what we're here to present or I know that, yeah. but that's why you're coming. That's what my proposal is: is that you come back with some ideas on how to do that. So to get rid of all outside music, and other places could have it, but we can't have it anymore. Know. We uh, hold on. Go ahead. It's Ann. not all outside music. It's just. As you get into the later p portion of the night, as as ha has happened in uh, in some other venues, they they cease it outside and move. Of course, it that's into normal. That's normal. Right. That's what our license says. It stops at ten, which is fine. Yeah. But I, I thought he was suggesting no more outside music, and it just sounds like we've got to cancel all music everywhere if, if that's well, okay. Uh, that, that wasn't yeah, the intent. Chris, okay, I, 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 I think I didn't because know. the establishment doesn't have any internal seats. Right. If you now want to have entertainment inside, then the, li the oh. entertainment license would have to correspond to the seats being brought inside. So it's just addressing the issue of insi inside music as you have inside seats, which presently we don't have any inside seats, I think is the, the motion, right. if I understand. That's okay. right. So it's just to submit a, an amended application for the internal the music inside. Right. Clear? That makes sense. Okay. Don? Thank you, Madam yeah, Chair. Thank Sorry, you. Thank you. I, I, didn't know. I was wondering if there was some. Got to go to the chair. Don, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. The question I have is, is a more universal question because you brought this up a couple times now. Uh, and I'm curious about whether this is a self inflicted wound or we did this to you. Is there something that we did that held up your applications so that you're up against it so that the summer is at risk? Um, is that what you're saying? Is that we did something that no, caused this? No, no. Uh, uh, my, I, you know, this board know. I, I had a series of hearings with the Board of Health at three. One was canceled because of a blizzard. That never really was a blizzard. So I came up many times, and that was the delay. I started in November. But the urgency for this thing that I'm looking at that says March 27th. I had to get Board of Health approval for, for the space, which we did, and the board granted it on March 12th took some time to get the application together, and that's why it sits before you now. I would have had this to you before December if I could, but because those hearings of the Board of Health took so long, and it turns out we do have an adequate system on site. It is state approved, it meets all the codes that were within our right, and they granted us and voted us in our favor. So I only ask that because it sounded an awful lot I'm like sorry if it's we waited so long that you're yeah. going to be in peril this no, whole no, no, summer. No, 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 but that's why the timing is the timing. Any, uh, Michael? So I just make this comment, uh, not just for Perk, but for everybody <coughs> else. Don, you heard him say he started this process in November, correct? So it's six months later. Just want that on the record. Hasn't been here six months. Okay. Well, so nope. we're not debating the length of the application. We're debating the six additional seats. Yeah. We have a motion currently to bring the, make it subject to bringing the, the entertainment inside right. for the latter part yeah. of the change in license and for <coughs> subject to approval of the planning board. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 
All opposed? Aye. All abstain. 311. 311, right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, new business. Uh, request for use of sick bank by police chief. We, we already voted we'll this. Yeah. No. So we've, as I mentioned in. <laughs> it's just zipping along. Give me the gavel because I'm really <laughs> hitting it. Um, we've already voted this. So I mentioned that at the beginning of the meeting. And we had this discussion in executive session. So we've uh, voted to approve this. Approval of the memorandum of understanding between the Cape Light Compact and the Town of Howard for regional energy planning assistance. Vote to sign. Um, yeah, go ahead, Michael. I move that we approve the memorandum of understanding between the Cape Light Compact and the Town of Harwich uh, for regional energy planning assistance. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Nobody's opposed, right? No. Uh, <clears throat> authorized Town Administrator to act as signatory for the Green Communities Designation Grant Program. Approval and authorize the chair to sign. Michael? I move that we approve and authorize town administrator to act as signatory for the Green Communities Designation Grant Program approval and authorize the chair to sign. Second. Chair to sign. Moved and seconded. Any chair to sign. Okay. Chair to sign. Right. I, I just have a comment because this process still makes me a little nervous in the sense that, uh, and I realize we're going ahead with it, but you know the numbers I, I struggle with a little bit. Are we are we buying the equipment that we would buy without this grant? Is my first question. You know, number two, we do we need it anyway? Otherwise, you know, we're spending uh, ninety-one thousand dollars for a boiler that will save us seventeen hundred dollars a year. You know, uh, the boilers that I would I would gather would wear out before it gets uh, repaid through this through the savings. And we have the same uh, same in all of them. So, uh, you know, it's gone too far. I'm going to vote for it. It's just a, yeah, uh, sure that it makes me a little nervous. This was on the capital plan. It's just because we became a green community, now we have a, a separate funding source to help us do this. But this was originally on the capital plan, and, and that's kind of the intent. We do have to, there's certain things on the capital plan that only comply with green communities. So not everything related to buildings will be eligible. So this has been on the capital plan for some time then. Right. So okay. we're going to. Uh, yeah, I just want to be sure we're not doing something for P, you know, politically correct. It's not actually beneficial to the town. That's my well, concern. And the green, what the Green Communities Program allows us to do is one, buy a boiler with their money, not ours. Um, and, you know, uh, so, you know, if we had not participated in it, we would have had to split up. Uh, presumably the 91,000, or we would have gotten something that was less efficient at a cheaper price, but would have run us $1,700 a year more to operate. And in any event, it sounds like in either of those cases, it's more money out of our pocket than for the participating in the Green Communities Act. The key is if we're buying it as we need it, not to comply with the uh, Green Communities Act is a no, but boil boilers in this town have been on their last legs for many years. And and I have to say, you know, originally I learned about green communities yeah. when I was first with the Energy yeah. Committee and found out that we weren't one and we were missing out on all yeah. these kinds of monies. Yeah. So I think that overall it's a smart investment that we're making to become, we, we voted to become a green community. Well, even as a building code goes, it's not a big uh, difference right. between the stretch code in the current building code. So there's a lot of different I, benefits. I, I'm just trying to challenge what I think is reasonable. Yeah, no, that's, I understand. Don't. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just uh, trying to <laughs> figure out here. Thank you. Uh, where the chair's signature ends and the town administrator's begins, what, what does the delegation entail? It would just be if there was any additional uh, paperwork that they wanted to have certification. I, this is, a, for instance, uh, when they fill out the building application, the building permit application, do some of the work. I sign it as the administrator. Things of that nature, administrative in nature. And will be kept in the loop with all of that as it goes on, because <coughs> it's a grant requirement. Uh, 
if you want to have copies of things provided to the board, I don't, traditionally, if you know you're getting a boiler changed and it's an application to the building department for a change in boiler, I have traditionally just signed that and the work's been done. If the board wants to see some of the paperwork flow, we can yeah. probably do that. I, I've remained skeptical about grants in general because once you sign them, they, they kind of grow. And just like to be able to know that we know what you know. An open book, so you could provide whatever you want. Provide. I think a, a one line that they've done it or not. I'm not too interested in you reading the document. You can all run for me. I'll we all run for the office. office. <laughs> all right. So, what do we have? Motion and a second. Aye. Any other discussion? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Abstain. Abstain. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, a pro uh, sorry. Confirmation of uh, job descriptions and reclassification. Now we're, we're doing one and two. We're holding. Yeah. Those. Uh, number three is not going to be presented to that if the Board of Water Commissioners has not uh, taken the appropriate action. action. On the first two, they are different but similar. The um, both uh -huh. chiefs had asked for their assistance uh, to be reviewed. I remember the uh, former deputy police chief, the police chief himself, and the fire chief also met several times with Mr. Tires and Mr. Verily to review their positions and the revised job description, which was just submitted by both uh, departments. After the desk review, the scores position to the current uh, position scoring method and found both positions should be upgraded. Uh, the descriptions reflect changes in both positions. Both are now highly confidential regarding medical information, confidential background information, and some collective bargaining. I submitted both revised descriptions to the bargaining unit, AGA, and met with the unit several times to discuss the descriptions and classifications. The bargaining unit has agreed to the changes. Uh, in the material that I provided, we did include the cost uh, for both of the position upgrades, which would be which would be effective as of July 1st. Uh, I have provided specific information <coughs> on the sources of funds to the finance director. She was sick, uh, she was out today, but uh, the uh, areas where the funds are to come, uh, very clear. Uh, there seems to be no indication that there would be a lack of funds in FY20 for either position. Thank you, Bob. Any discussion by the board for either? We'll, we'll take one at a time. The assistance of the uh, fire chief. Madam Chair, yeah. I'd move that we uh, approve the job descriptions and reclassification of the assistant fire chief. I'll second it. I, I do have a question slash comment. Uh, it seems every time we get a classification, it goes up by multiple levels right. or multiple grades. Why, why is that? Are we not moving fast enough or, or is no. Reason, the point yeah, you think you'd have a gradual increase and not go up, uh, you know, two or three grades each time, with not just these two, but across the board. Most, I'm trying to remember back on some of the ones. Some have gone up one to two. Uh, in this case, it was two. Uh, seven, yeah, two in this case. Uh, they were underutilized, though, and the descriptions as they've been revised required a higher level of duties and responsibilities, which, according to the point schedule we use under AGA uh, requires that we be making the grade nine. In addition to that, looking at looking globally, we find that in these two cases, there are a number of assistants, as the title yeah. implies, that are in the same category, grade nine. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. It just struck me as we, rarely do we move up a grade or a, it's, it's always multiple. It varies. Generally, <laughs> it has been, it has been the case in the past several that I've done this time around. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Bob. Any other comments from the board, uh, Don? No, Madam Chair, I'm just wondering where in the packet this is. I mean, I'm inclined to vote for it anyway. Page 103. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, Don? <laughs> <laughs> Assistant to the Chief of Police. No, that's yep. right. Above. 103. Yep. Yeah. Fire. Uh, yeah, this is 
It is. It's uh, I don't have fire. No, I think it's above that one. Here. No, Don, you're right. It is I don't think it made it. It did not make it. It, it, it isn't factor. actually. Oh, you're right. I did miss that. It's Sorry. Uh, but it's in the, it was in the, um, hold was, on. Was not in the Dropbox. I think it's in the confidential. It wasn't in the no, Dropbox. No, it's not. I just. Oh. It's not in the confidential. Though. That's fine. Kind of, I read, both I read these things. <laughs> they marry each other, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Exactly. So we'll, we'll move yeah. on. With, with variations concerning some of the uh, medical, this uh, more good. medical in fire than in these more no confidential, uh, or different confidential in the uh, Yeah, that was. Okay, yeah, no, it isn't. explain why. should have been there. should have. It's on the agenda. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So we vote, still vote it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Picasso is correct that there are similar uh, in duties of we just make sure it's in next week's packet, so if we vote it, the yes, public gets to see it. Okay, so it's on, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. And now uh, we'll go to the assistant uh, to the chair. chief. Move that we conf confirm the job description and reclassification for the assistant to the police chief. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion by the board? Yeah. Okay. What, Don, this one's on page 103. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> remember, we were talking about reading everything. That's how I knew and the this, other one was this in there. This is uh, <laughs> highly, highly uh, mm -hmm. uh, promoted by Deputy Chief Tom, Tom past Deputy Chief Tom yes. Gagin. <laughs> I happened to be at his retirement party, and the speech that you gave about Katie was outstanding. Where do you get the, the, the numbers? Hmm? That's up here. In fact, we need to acknowledge that Mr. Gagnon has come back to the meeting. Yeah. I imagine that's why you're here. Well, for entertainment. I actually just enjoy your presence. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there it is. Oh. Thank you. That's just an annoying little bar that I keep on trying to get rid of. Okay. So moved and seconded. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you for your presence, Tom Gagnon, retiree. <laughs> um, draft the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program Application and Support Letter. Uh, Chris, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, this was uh, an effort that was uh, led by uh, Charlene Greenhalge, the uh, town planner. Uh, as we do different uh, emergency management elements, we have been planning for uh, different elements in terms of sea level rise and the damage that can occur uh, to different parts of the uh, coastal part of the community. Uh, there is an opportunity which she is seeking uh, for an application through the state for municipal vulnerability preparedness program uh, and this would be a, a grant application for an outside firm uh, that would be a state certified um, MVP provider uh, to assemble the uh, core team and put together this work. So this would be a grant that would allow us to secure the services of a certified provider to come in and assist the town in putting together uh, plans to address uh, weather related events. Thank you, Chris. Any questions from the board? What action are we expected to? Uh just an acknowledgement that this grant would be going in and, and like any grant, uh, if we are awarded it, then we'll bring the grant award back uh, to the board for execution in terms of the contract. Yeah. Well, it, Madam Chair, it says one of the MISO uh, planning grant, one item one is a signed letter of support from the chair of the board of selectmen, mayor, town administrator, similar, similar city or town official showing a commitment to the project and a willingness to lead on this issue. The letter should also state that municipal leadership will participate in the workshop process. Yeah. Michael? I don't have a problem. I, I couldn't find any problems with it, but it does say on the agenda that it's a draft. Are we, are we to wait for the, uh, for the final copy before we vote? Or? No, I think it means draft the the oh, just draft. Support All right, I read yeah. this draft. So yeah. My apologies. Yeah. So I'll make a motion. Okay. I move that we uh, approve and support municipal vulnerability preparedness program application and support letter. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion, Ed? Well, I just you know, um, 
in our past item there was some language used which I really hate when it gets used in our discussions and that's you know the concept of are we doing this to be politically correct I mean this is you know in some some areas of the country uh, planning for climate change is only being done to be politically correct well, and I find I it a very uh, unfortunate that we uh, in our discussion that we've used that sort of terminology to denigrate certain actions well I, I like to denigrate with politically correctness myself but this one uh, uh, I'm very much uh, uh, in favor of because it's not uh, theoretical some of the discussion on political on climate change or long term this is something we should be doing to protect ourselves immediately you know erosion control beach control so this is actual things that will benefit us where others are more broad-based global if you will good discussion points I'm very much in favor of this just for, but in the same context I guess as my other discussions In the previous discussions, you know, if uh, uh, taking action on that it has an immediate uh, uh, positive benefit for our town to allow, uh, save us funding and allow us to be better able to be prepared for these items. Don? Vice Mayor Chair. Uh, it, it, so everybody's crystal clear about this. This isn't a debate about who caused it, it's a debate about rising sea levels that are measurable. So we need to plan for what's happening in front of us, and other people can debate about who caused it. Madam, Madam Chair, and I know that Don, my wife and I, we walk the beach every every day during the winter, and have seen the higher tides year by year coming in. So I can comment on that because uh, that's my world every day about permitting yeah. and uh, FEMA and flood changes, and it's coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people need to protect be prepared and any kind of money that we can get that helps us get there we should be in favor for yep. so Good. we've got a uh, motion, motion in a second. second any further discussion all in favor aye, aye. aye. all opposed okay. uh, submission of request sorry old business submission of requested information relative to Harwichin and uh, Tavern Entertainment and Madam Chair, uh, at the last meeting we had uh, some folks passed out material, and I just want to make sure the board got it. There was a request specifically for the sound uh, study and the uh, letters, so it's just in the package because we received the material. There's no action being sought in, in regards to that. The applicant will have to come back uh, on that topic. Don? Thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, it, and what it is pertinent again, when they do have you know, a follow on. Uh, Thing. Perhaps we could put it in there because we wouldn't want to put a burden on uh, everybody to go back and reread things. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> if we could put it in the current. That's generally, package. what we try to do. Because yeah. I realize people don't keep it from packet to packet. Okay. So you don't need any. Well, there's no. There's no action that's being sought. Just to, it was a request to follow up, and we're following right. up. Michael. I'd also note there was a letter from the uh, owner of the inn to the board of selectmen. Yeah, um, I'd like to see that in the packet as well, and I think you make some good points. Oh, it's already scanned. Okay. So we'll add that good. to the packet sure. for uh, that hearing. That was after. That yeah, I don't think we have scheduled that yet, the, uh, the continued hearing on it. The letter from the, uh, the owner? Yeah, he was the, the letter that he sent to the board okay. in terms of to treat him the same as others. In businesses, etc., in town. So yeah, we'll include we'll that in the package. The package. And I, I thought was it the thirteenth or the for the public hearing, or is it beyond that? I don't remember yeah, the yeah. date. I think we may be beyond that. Okay. At this Seems like it was twenty. The week after, maybe we we're looking at. Yeah, I think. Uh, in any case, I think yeah. we may be targeting uh, May twentieth. Okay. Okay. So we'll add the letter. Okay. Um. And then the selectman's article assignments. And there was the draft in the uh, <coughs> packet. Uh, Chris uh, took the first stab at that. And so uh, if there's anything in there that anyone has right. an issue with, he can let me know. Yeah, there's no pride of authorship. I mean, I just looked at trying to group things together. I don't know. However you want to change it, I'm fine with it. I have no problem with what you gave me. I would ask, is the uh, police chief going to, or a representative of the police department going to be 
at town meeting to discuss the petitioner looking for uh, the immigration, immigration law change as well as the planner for or the planning board for the uh, proposed planning board planning changes. Yeah, I, I mentioned that department heads. There is a, uh, a section of the charter that requires uh, department heads attend town meeting. Okay. So I don't think I've heard back from any that they're unable to attend. Thank you. I believe it also says chairman. Chairman of the board. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, they're allowed to do yeah. that. Okay. So folks are good with that? Yeah. yeah. I don't love mine, but that's all right. Um, town administrator's report. Hmm? So on the uh, town administrator report, just on the uh, safe routes to schools, I, I did have uh, a gentleman in uh, today, uh, <coughs> Steve Tupper, who had kind of walked through the uh, the project with me. Uh, what what will happen and he's going to a meeting on Wednesday. I have a follow-up meeting on Friday So hopefully we'll have a little bit more information on this But the state will actually in this award they will contract with ACOM a, a company that's on their state bid list and they will come out and basically design the sidewalk network with the town's input uh, and then there is an allocation of approximately 650,000 uh, that would be the grant award and then they'll come back and say is everyone on board with the work that's being sought and then they'll go and do the work so this is kind of a state project uh, but I will get additional uh, details because they have a meeting on Wednesday so I'll, I'll know by Friday when we have our meeting on what that project is Sorry. thanks madam chair uh, and to be clear uh, Lincoln called me to see what objections are there? They're, they're more universal anyway. It has to do with any grant. At what point is there a plug that we could pull without us being like obligated to do something? And mm -hmm. That's why this seemed to be a chicken and the egg for me. Uh, take the grant, and then we'll tell you what we're going to design. Uh, yeah. So I'm just wary in general because grants like 124 is a big project <coughs> that comes to mind. It's not just whether they can do a five-foot sidewalk; it's how are they doing it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you because there's some areas that will have retaining walls and, and so on. So it, it is a little bit of a challenge, and I think we'll get those details. And they'll be keeping us surprised along the way. Yeah, so that's the idea. On uh, Cape Cod Municipal Health uh, Board, I, I have been a member of that board for um, since I've been here for at least five years. Uh, we had a meeting uh, last week. Uh, it was not my intention to do this, but um, at the uh, here at the meeting, uh, the play, I'm on the steering committee, which is really a, a leadership uh, group, and the vice president of the overall group uh, is part of the town of Sandwich and can no longer serve. So they had a vacancy. And I would say I was strongly encouraged to, to put my name in, and I did, and I was uh, named to that board. <coughs> so I am moving up. Uh, in that organization. In terms of time commitment, it's, it's a volunteer board. I meet once a month uh, at that. I do go to their meetings anyway. I don't think this will be any additional significant time uh, constraint. But I do think it's uh, good for the board uh, to have a, a strong representation on the Cape Cod Municipal Health Group, which is a joint purchase uh, association. And our insurance is self-funded, so we design the plan and we try to manage the cost. So. Um, something that I had not intended on doing that day, but sometimes, you know, if you're in the room, they kind of say, well, you attend the meetings, couldn't you do it? Um, so it is, it, it's a good board, so you know, I am happy to, to do that. Just a, a couple others. Um, I did attend on uh, Friday night, just to put a plug in for uh, the Taste of Harwich over at the Waquasset. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about restaurants and there was a lot of restaurants that kind of presented uh, themselves and their in their wares it, it really is a, uh, a nice take it's a nice night uh, so it was a, a nice opportunity to see some of uh, Harwich's finest restaurants kind of show what they're able to do so uh, I have been attending that event I think I've been there almost every year that I've been here so maybe I like food or something <laughs> I don't know, but it, it is a nice a nice take uh, and then Saturday morning I, I saw a couple uh, folks there I did the uh, tour to trash. I just, you know, the one thing I, I did, uh, Bell's Neck, and just please, it, you know, if you're going to go and you're going to drink the little nips, we have trash cans out there for a reason. 
-hmm. Just, you know, mm -hmm. how do you take in the, uh, you know, the, the value of nature and then just litter is just kind of beyond me. But um, anyways, I, I thought that was a, uh, the, the rain held off, so it was actually a pretty nice day to go out and do that. Uh, and then just a couple others. Uh, the Affordable Housing Trust has a, uh, a meeting tomorrow. Uh, it's a presentation that will be focused on primarily two areas. Uh, one, the need for affordable housing. And then second, the specifics of Article 61 and, and what we're attempting to do. Uh, that's here in, in this room from uh, 6 o'clock to 7.30 uh, tomorrow night. Uh, very much a uh, kind of a presentation and then questions and answer afterwards. Uh, but if folks want to learn about the, the real need for affordable housing, uh, I think it would be a, uh, a good take. Uh, the next one is uh, John Rendon has been working diligently. Uh, last year we did get a, a, a dredge grant. I think it was a neighborhood of about 60000 That program is out again, so he is intending on applying for a similar um, work and doing some of the, the dredging uh, that we traditionally do. And then just uh, lastly, I, I can't believe, but a week from tonight is uh, town meeting. So uh, we are trying to feverishly finish up all the motions. Uh, on the motions, I, when I was going through and distributed it out, um, there was one in which there is no favorable motion on the uh, funding of the cemetery uh, project. So I think there's been action taken or intended action taken on the uh, citizen petition uh, on the cemetery, uh, I'm sorry, the pet burial ground. Uh, and then there was a affirmative vote by the Finance Committee, but the Finance Committee, I don't believe, voted the, the funding uh, of that project to finish the project. So at some point, um, you know, if we're going to have a favorable motion to have consideration on that article, I just didn't know whether the board uh, felt comfortable on that to go forward, or most likely there would be probably a citizen that would uh, sign that, but the Finance Committee I don't believe has a, a favorable motion uh, relevant to that. So I will prepare one on behalf of the Board of Selectmen if the board is uh, so inclined. I, I don't remember how the board voted uh, on that article or if there was a discussion and no vote. A recollection of discussion and no vote. But don't look at me. I know. <laughs> John's paying for the whole thing. <laughs> what, what you I guys were. We took action on that. I'll, I'll put it on. Do we have the generally all except for four to one. Most <laughs> <Last> of <laughs> <thing. laughs> <laughs> supporting the getting the project yeah. done. I don't. I don't recall I having don't a conversation. We can formally put on the agenda for the meeting before. Motion or not? Okay. What? Okay. We can put it. It's not on the agenda. I realize yeah. that. So we can yeah. put it on the agenda before. But I will for the meeting before town meeting. We probably should say too that as town we'll meeting starts, we'll, we'll post the uh, the meeting over at the uh, community center. We we can uh, agenda that for a, a short. We can agenda that for a short discussion with FinCom before the town meeting as well. We've done that in the past where we don't have yeah. uh, where there's some disagreement, have a discussion. Yeah. Oh, for both posts. Okay. That was the only one I kind of noticed when I sent out that I had it that it was uh, somebody needs to make an affirmative motion. Yeah. Okay. Okay with me if you don't, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's democracy for you. That concludes my uh, comments this evening, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Don? Uh, yeah, I think Larry could speak to it a little bit more later, but we had the uh, DHY meeting for the uh, sewering on uh, this past Friday and uh, basically just discussed the, the grant uh, that we're we're renewing in order to have the facilitation for the meetings that we have submitted uh, all towns voted in favor of including that budget process into the uh, operations uh, for it which would allow everybody in each town to have their own representatives sitting at the table with, over the budgets and I don't think there was a lot more uh, to the discussion it was just where we're at and We'll be meeting further about that, but uh, we wanted to keep sure. you apprised of what was going on. Uh, I have I don't much to add on that. We're, we're uh, planning to have a uh, public meeting uh, in the next month or so, I think. With all the 
with all the three towns to bring people up to speed. Mm -hmm. uh, so and we have to get that going, but and possibly a fall meeting if we get that far. Uh, just a, a note that uh, um, Friday morning at uh, 9 o'clock, they're having the dedication of the art cabins at uh, uh, Sacquatucket Harbor. Uh, Senator Sear will be attending as part of the uh, process as, as will some uh, officials from the state arts what time? Folks, it's 9 o'clock. I thought it was 10 o'clock. It's 10 o'clock. Yeah. yeah, just to be clear. Well, you can get there at 9 make sure everything's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 10. 10. <laughs> 10. Uh, Michael? Just a few training. Chris, we mentioned trying to get the uh, chairmen's and the committee members some open meeting law training. I think we really need to push that. Yeah, I did have a uh, discussion with um, Brian Riley at Coleman and Page. I will nail him down to getting some specific dates. Okay. Parking committee meeting tomorrow at 1030 okay. here. Yeah. The um, AmeriCorps, I also attended that. AmeriCorps uh, tore the trash, but I uh, just wanted to thank the AmeriCorps, Amy Yusowski, and all the volunteers. We got an awful lot of trash off the streets in Harwich. And Amy mentioned, I'm sure she'll give us a report sooner or later, there was a record record amount of volunteers this year so very well run and, and a great it's an eye-opener uh, lastly the town administrators uh, review uh, we've discussed this in the past that it be done by the sitting board I don't know when we're planning on starting that process but elections are the 21st and I don't know how we would ask uh, two potential new board members to do a review on a past year so I would encourage the administrative staff to send us the forms and at least get on get on that so that we can have an open discussion in a meeting um, after town meeting yeah. Yeah, but we, we, okay. that that needs to be done we only have a couple meetings left mm -hmm. yeah. it's 13 till the 20th yeah that's it uh, I have nothing okay. Fine. I'm just gonna uh, remind um, voters to uh, go to the voter information committee's uh, page on the website uh, there are a lot of different um, things coming up. I'm not going to name them all because there's multiple, but uh, Chris Joyce was in front of us this evening talking about the League of Women Voters, uh, candidates, interviews, and the Monterey Regional School uh, candidates as well. So just want to point out that uh, people should go to the website, look at what they have on their agenda. And I know that um, Robin earlier mentioned that there's also a, a forum for candidates at the South Howard Meeting House, and I believe that was five so. Can I get a motion? Motion to adjourn. Motion seconded. We adjourn.